everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast, episode 90. I am your host with the most, Nathaniel Infljance, joined as always by Eric Moore. Now, a couple cool things going on to this, this time. First off, I need to say, sorry, there was an unscheduled non-podcast last week. Uh, my bad on not warning, especially our patrons that pay for this podcast to be every week. I do want to apologize directly to you guys for not saying anything, but uh, hopefully <laughs> you understand why we had the betting special mm-hmm. punishment go down kind of instead. I know you guys didn't get early access to that. I just went up when it got done. It's been a hectic week, but hey, you know what? You guys seem to enjoy that video. It got about the same amount of views a normal podcast gets anyway, so I guess really? it kind of... Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. So I guess it kind of replaced the podcast episode anyways. Um, so that was your podcast for this week, was uh, oh, Eric yeah. fulfilling the yeah. punishment of the betting special. For those yeah. that did not catch uh, our the Game Awards betting special, uh, it's okay if you don't go back and watch it. I mean, you can if you want to verify everything. But, uh, yeah, I won the betting special by two questions, and you guys got crushed. So nah, They well, lost to me by one, you by three. Exactly. So. They got crushed. Yes. In our world, that's a crushing. Yes, in our is. world, us getting right, winning by two questions yeah, is a crushing. Right. Uh, right. The first Game Awards special we ever did, I destroyed you. Uh, I think I just knew more about gaming at the time. Yeah. That was probably it. Because it was, it was, that was early podcast days yeah. when you were just starting to get back into gaming. Uh, and then the second Game Awards, infamously, I won the following day. Mm, yeah. Um, it was literally that close. One point battle, and I won uh, on one award that wasn't announced till the next day. And then this year, uh, it was actually really, really tight. Like, if you were watching our live stream of it, it was really tight. Up until the last Up two at, awards. Like, like, literally the last two awards are what decided it. And it was really only one of them because uh, the game, game of the year, we both had the same game of the year. Mm-hmm. And I had a mulligan uh, from James for an extra one. So there was no way you could gain a point on me in the last one. Mm-hmm. So it was really the second to last question. Once I got that one right, it was like, okay, it's over. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. what happens in the last one. Mm-hmm. So, But still, the fact it came down to the final two was like, man, of course it did. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be a Game Awards betting special if it wasn't like right down to the wire. Well, and if I would have trusted my gut on the, the one question, I would have actually been one point closer. But, but, I but he didn't. I know, I know. But he didn't. I know. Uh, anyways, that being said, uh, so he had a run around the block wearing some shorts. It was originally a swimsuit. It, I didn't hold you to it. Yeah, I said, I know. you know what? Close enough. Might have been some underwear under there. Extra protection. Mm. I, I I thought about yeah. I was thinking about this as I was editing. I'm like, technically, we said swimsuit. He didn't perform it in the swimsuit. Do I force him to redo it on a technicality? Because you know me. Oh, yeah. yeah no, you know me. Technicality, technicality yeah. you didn't perform the punishment. Yeah. But I'm like, you know what? I let it go uh, just because, one, um, shorts are pretty much the same. I mean, when I go swimming, I just wear shorts. Yeah, but I, I probably would not have put on underwear, to be fair. Yeah. I don't wear underwear when I swim. so uh, uh, I just didn't want anything to fall out. And two, <laughs> <laughs> anything to fall out. Yeah. Tie those strings up, baby. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then two, um, he was kind of huffing and puffing for quite a while after. Yeah, I was. Um, one, because, you know, he's just. We're out of shape. I'm, he's he's really out of shape. I'm round. Um, I am I am in, in shape. It's just round, <laughs> rotund. Yes. Um, and then he just had a hard time kind of catching his breath the rest of the day. I'm assuming it's better now. Yeah. Not 100. Yeah. percent No. I'm still cu- I'm still hacking up a lung every once in a while. But you know, time to work out. It is what it is. Yeah. I know. Right. <laughs> Anyways, come on, take the Nintendo Prime workout challenge. Yeah. Right now it's at 60 push-ups and 60 sit-ups a day. Yeah. And if you can't do the sit-ups because you're back, do crunches or something. Yeah. Anyways, actually, you can do a whole bunch of crap that I can't do because of my knees. So yeah. you can do leg lifts or whatever you want to do. Yeah. Take the challenge, Eric. Yeah. I should challenge you. I'm, yeah. I'm literally doing that every single day from, well, from like a few few days back until January when it resets to mm-hmm. whatever the new workout is after I get my knee scan. So. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Come on, Eric. Step up to the plate. I'm yeah. trying to encourage you, man. I know. I know. Because we're both people that, like, we need that encouragement. Yeah, I know. Yeah, because we'll do like we'll do good on our own for a little while. You were doing really good on your own for a little while, mm-hmm. and then it just always goes to crap because yeah. crap happens in life. And yeah, right. Just it's it's once I stop going, it's <laughs> like it just it never just all is again. It snowballs. Yeah. And the same is true for me. And I've tried a zillion diets, and like I know how to lose weight, guys. I know the kind of workouts to do. I know what to eat, and that's not the problem. That's motivation. And that, and I just really like food. Well, I mean, obviously, we really everyone likes food. 
I, I yeah. The, I, the issue, like for me, uh, and I learned this a long time ago, the issue isn't always like liking food, it's portion size. No, there's that. Eat whatever you want. Make the portion size one. And then you're like, but I'm hungry. But yes, you are. But yeah. you, eventually you won't be. Yeah, I know. Because your stomach won't be stretched out to forever. Yeah. It does actually retract yes, back in a little bit. Anyways, that being said, uh, we're back. And uh, an- another change uh, besides missing a week, although I think uh, you guys were pretty well rewarded with that video. <laughs> um, by the way, undefeated champion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Never yeah. lost a betting special yet. Yeah, uh, only yeah. a live stream bet, which yeah, I mean, I lost at a game or something. It happens. <laughs> um, I, I mean, surprise, surprise! I lost at a game. Yeah. Uh, as you guys might have seen in my Super Smash Bros. streams, I really, really suck at Smash Bros. I don't think I've ever live streamed a video game where I looked like I was good at that video game. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Like us when we streamed Overcooked was probably the best I looked yeah, as a right, gamer, yeah. and even then, it wasn't that good. <laughs> Like Breath of the Wild, like, oh, you're a Zelda guy. I'm like, sure, I looked good in that E3 footage in 2016 because nobody else or everyone else on the show floor was sucking, and I got to play the demo way more than everyone else. Yeah, right. But the thing is, when you actually watch me play Breath of the Wild, I'm not that good. Yeah. I still haven't legit beat a line. I mean, this was was how bad it was. We had to turn one full filming into how many ways can we kill Link? Well, that was because I was trying to get to, um, I was trying to get to a shrine, yeah. or I thought, because see, I I had visited every single shrine one time, and but I was but didn't have any of it, a lot of it on footage. So I was trying to get to the the one shrine that there wasn't a lot of footage of in the snow area, and I went to the wrong part. And I remember, like nowadays, yeah, I know where it is, but back then, you know, you're you're so overwhelmed by everything going on at E3. Mm-hmm. Even though I played it a zillion times over three days, it's kind of like yeah, but you don't exactly have everything memorized. Mm-hmm. So I thought I was going to where I was going, and instead I ended up going to the highest peak. And when I got to the top, I realized, oh crap. Well, <laughs> tell you no time left on this demo for anything else. Let's see how many ways I could die. And yep. it was basically, uh, it was it, um, it was how many ways can my hearts go away yeah. in the middle of the snow? I mean, I jumped off yeah. a cliff a few times, let some enemies hit me, but yeah, it could have been more entertaining if I had planned to do that from the beginning. Yeah, how many ways right. can I kill Link in fifteen minutes? Yeah, that would that, that would have been, been cool. But good. I didn't. Yeah. I see in, yeah. in hindsight, I don't think that's what I should have done. Yeah, said right. screw it, but yeah, yeah whatever. It, I um, mean, it did make the person who was working laugh for himself. <laughs> Well, they were laughing with me just trying to get up yeah, there without yeah. clothes on because yeah. I was doing oh, a yeah. naked, naked run, run, naked run in the snow. Oh, yeah. So you know, you die, but it doesn't take you all the way back. Yeah. It only takes you a little bit back. Yeah. So you make a little bit of progress every time, and that's what I was doing to try to get to the shrine because yeah. I figured I could beat the shrine really quick, but right, right, uh, right. didn't happen. Anyways, uh, so I'm bad at video games. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's that's a, the general gist of the story. I, I suck at video games, but I love them and I play the hell out of them. There are some games I'm pretty good at, but. Uh, as a father of three now, I don't get to put in the kind of practice I once did. That being said, it's hammer time. <laughs> Just a, I don't yeah, know why I put yeah, that at the beginning yeah. of the notes for the podcast. Our yeah. first topic is actually about the Game Awards that happened last week. Uh, just, just some things to talk about. Um, for starters, forget the betting special. How do you feel about the Game Awards? Uh, Especially compared they're, to years they're past. They're good. It, a lot better than years past. I mean, well, Better than years past. I still think they have room for improvement. Um, what was, what was the like? What parts did you really enjoy? Oh gosh, I, I did like the music. Some of the some of the band. I mean, I thought the music was. There was like one I didn't understand. Yeah, but just because I, I don't think, understand, it doesn't it, mean. I it, think it was actually in a game. Yeah, I think it was a game tie-in, but I it was just because I didn't recognize right, it. It right, doesn't right, mean right. it doesn't belong. Right, right. But I don't know. I liked the orchestra. The orchestra was really good. That, oh, that I like the orchestra. Good. And now they have a theme. Now they have a new right. theme for theme it. We'll yeah. probably hear next year. Right, 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 right. Um, you know, with Red Dead winning the uh, the music stuff, it it didn't impress me all that much. Red the song De- well, that when, they, when they played it, yeah, the song that they yeah, chose. It was just it, here's the thing. It's a good song, it but, is, but it's, for for a performance purpose, I think like having listened to a little bit of the Red Dead Two soundtrack. Since the Game Awards, I'm like, ah, there's there was a lot of better songs I could have chose it for an audience. It was just a little bit more long and drawn out, and it was just like, eh. Oh, it's one of those songs that's good in the background of yeah, a video right, game. Yeah, right, Of course it is. Yeah. But, like, there were more epic tracks yeah. that they could have chose yeah. that would have fit an yeah. actual live performance. But whatever. I mean, I'm sure it was totally up to the people who who, did, who were in charge of the music, and that's what they wanted to play. Maybe they have a, a big affinity for that song. Yeah. Um, um, trying to think of what else there were. What was that I really That you really enjoyed? enjoyed? Um, you enjoy any of the actual awards? 
I mean, that's always I the mean, thing coming out of it. Is, it was, is do people care about the actual awards? I know that it's very controversial, but I was laughing with uh, Sonic Fox. Sonic Fox. I mean, you were busting a gut. I, was. I wasn't even in the room. I was, and you were just. I'm like, what is he laughing so hard? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, political joke. I mean, it, I, I'm not <laughs> the biggest political person. I hate politics, but I thought it was funny. <laughs> Let, 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 let's, I mean, you guys all know what happened, right? You know, I, I'm not yeah. going to say what exactly he said, but he basically poked fun at Republicans, uh, which, I mean, if, I, if he, he would have went the he, other he, way, if he would have went the other way, I would still laugh myself either way. I yeah, thought it was funny well, as hell. Well, it's weird though because like he was based it on stereotypes, right, which I mean, right. you know, and, and 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 to me, this is why that that moment became kind of controversial. It wasn't like there's not some precedent for what he said. Mm-hmm. But summarizing, you know, half of the country or whatever it is, whatever, yeah. maybe it's thirty five percent, whatever it is, yeah. of the country uh, that votes as like being these very, very generally bad things. Right. Um, I just thought was man. I get like maybe it was a joke, but then you would go to him on Twitter and like he's very serious about it. Like he's yeah. very, very staunch yeah, yeah. on the left. Yeah. And uh, absolutely hates the right. And then the thing is like. I'm not. I'm, I'm kind of like. I don't want to say I'm a centrist, but I, I don't really fit into a specific political party. Yeah. Like when I vote, it's all over the place. I vote for the people that are gonna actually do the things that right, I care right. about. Um, it doesn't really matter to me if they're Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, um, Equestrian, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Whatever they are, it doesn't really matter. I pay attention more to the things they are trying to do. Yeah that affect actually affect my life. Mm-hmm. And you might be like, well, you got to worry about the lives of others. I understand that. But in a lot of cases, I don't know what will help the lives of others because I'm not living their life. Right. Now you could talk about, oh, what about the bigotry and the racism? That's fine. I'm not saying like it's fine for it to happen, but what, what, what do you expect me? I can't fix it. You know? So I'm worried about the policies being made. Are the policies being made going to be bigotry and racist? Probably not. It's not like they're going to come up with a bill on the on the floor of the Senate that's going to be all oh everyone gets this benefit but this group of people like yeah unless it's the rich versus the poor that's yeah, a, that's a whole other yeah, thing yeah. but yeah yeah so it's just I I thought it was a funny moment but I I think what made me kind of pause on if this is the correct venue for it and I get that like he I don't want to say he represents gamers but he represents a segment of gamers yeah uh, is 26 million people watch this. Mm-hmm. 26 million. More than double mm-hmm. the audience of last year. Uh, someone was noting that, oh, it's bigger than the Oscars. Not really. The Oscars are broadcast worldwide. It's almost bigger than the Oscars in just the U.S., but that 26 million was worldwide numbers. So it's not even close. The Oscars still gets like over 100 million viewers mm-hmm. worldwide. It used to be billion, by the way. So Oscars is actually really sunk, <laughs> sunk down in the national spotlight. It's become more and more like the American audience is the only one – Tune well. in every time, but whatever. Yeah, uh, I just I think there is something to say uh, when it comes to the politically charged stuff. Um, when when you have an audience of twenty six million, and I, and I don't know what Jeff can do. Yeah, because it's it's live. You yeah. can't tell people what to say. You could try to suggest, please don't really say this, don't do this. But yeah. the bottom line is, if they didn't want that, they would have never had Sonic Fox up for voting in the first right. place. Because this isn't like it's the first politically charged thing he's ever said. Right. He's If you go through his Twitter anyways, I don't know Sonic Fox, by the way. Yeah. I mean, I voted for him, so thanks for the, the point. Yeah, but, right. But I didn't vote for him like on the Game Awards. I voted for him as I thought he would win. Yeah. Um, I don't – I just don't know – I don't know – what to really do about it. I don't think you can't remove what, what I've actually learned. Okay. Is uh, cause you know, at Nintendo prime, you guys know, we don't really allow political conversations to happen, especially if it involves, and you guys could say, Oh, it's, you're just trying to silence people. If it involves like live streams and you guys talking in the live stream, uh, cause to say, I say one thing that maybe like this topic, this topic here is an example, yeah. obviously politically related. Yeah. I will be shutting down all the politic conversation. And people are like, what? I'm like, I'm not trying to shut down your viewpoints. I shut it down across the board. I don't care who you are. Yeah. And the reason for it is people are so impassioned, like Sonic Fox, into their beliefs mm-hmm. when it comes to politics that people just butt heads to butt heads. Yeah. They might even not fundamentally disagree. 
Like, there are plenty of Republicans that aren't the things he said. Right. And they don't fundamentally disagree that those right. things are wrong, but they feel insulted being grouped in with the ones that do. And the thing is, there's ones on the left that do, too. So it's not even like a... I think a lot of it, and I said this at the time, a lot of it just had to do with, with, with kind of the rise of the current president and, like, the audience mm-hmm. he kind of hit with. Yeah, you had the normal... You had, like... I don't want to say the normal, but, like, usually you're staunch Republicans, and then you had, you had, like, those people that usually don't vote but kind of believe in some of the Republican values... But are also severely, you know, against the gays and, mm-hmm. and all that stuff, and uh, they also voted for Trump because Trump kind of. I want to be careful saying that our president was racist. Um, I don't know Donald Trump, but I can safely say he ran on a platform that encouraged that kind of behavior, um, or definitely didn't discourage it. Yes, and that led to him getting more votes from people who normally don't show up to vote. So, uh, and and. In some ways, I think it was almost good because it kind of exposed how far away our country is mm-hmm. from solving some of these issues. Um, and I understand, like, I'm a Roman Catholic, so I'm supposed to be against gay. Um, or gay is okay as long as you don't get married or whatever. whatever. The, the, I don't even know yeah. what they – I think the official Catholic church stands is like you can, you can be with another man but not sexually and not in marriage because you can't have – yeah, Roman Catholic Church can't have sex unless you're married. Yeah. So if they don't allow you to get married, then obviously you can't have sex. But you can still have a relationship. You can kiss, whatever. Yeah. Um, that's kind of like the official stance. <laughs> but just because I'm Roman Catholic doesn't mean that like, I agree with that. You know, it's kind of like and here's the thing: because I don't agree with it, then you're not supposed to get the Eucharist and blah. It's like, yeah. Here's the thing: I'm never. There's not any religion, any group, any political spot that I ever fully agree with. Exactly. Uh, no one has it all figured out. Bernie Sanders did not have it all figured out. Hillary Clinton did not have it all figured out. Um, Donald Trump definitely does not have it all figured out. No one has yeah, it no. all figured out. Yeah. I, I, we talked about it a lot, actually, heading into this last election. Like You were voting you know, for, for the two most likely to win candidates if yeah. you were, oh, I don't want to throw my vote to the third party because I think it's a waste of vote. I don't think it's a waste of vote because I think if enough of us do it, eventually a third party can win. It's not going to happen now. It's not going to happen in the next election. But you're talking over time. By the time I'm ancient, yeah, right. there might actually be a shot if more and more people keep doing it. Uh, but if more and more people got sick of the BS and, and I mean, it's probably only going to happen when a political party finally splits. Yeah, oh which, for sure, which which could happen um, someday. But it, it's a it's just an interesting situation to, to be in. And I was saying at the time, like I don't know that there's. You know, it's almost like if you only want to vote for Republican or Democrat, I felt like I was voting between what's which is the lesser of two evils. And it wasn't because I, I think Hillary Clinton's terrible or I think Donald Trump's terrible. It's that what they're trying to do to fix the country, I don't agree with either of them. Mm-hmm. So I don't agree with either of them. I, by the way, I didn't vote for either of them. So I, and that was my thing. I, I live by my word. I said I was going to vote third party. I voted third party. Mm-hmm. I voted for the candidate that I thought would do the best job. That's what you're supposed to do. Party loyalty shouldn't matter. You should be voting for the candidate you think is going to do the best job. And in in this case, I just yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I it, was funny. It, it, it was it was funny, but I think right. it, the I, I, here's it, the thing. I think for the, like you, the the reason you busted your gut, and I don't I, again, politics suck. Yeah, right. I will. I will say a lot of a lot of yeah. jokes you share with me rip on Republicans. Yeah, a lot of them. And like my parents are are, are staunch Republicans, um, and I'll rip on them. They'll rip on me back. It's pretty easy to rip on me. You guys have seen him rip on me and <laughs> my fiance do it. But it's it, it's one of those things that I knew you busted a gut because of uh, your more left leaning political beliefs and how obviously you know the way that Trump rose up and kind of the. It's kind of the generalizations that are like the generalizations he stated are out there. Yeah. They're floating around. Yeah. Um, but I, I, like I said, I probably a lot of, like I a lot of left is, if it was the other way. A, too. Lot, a lot of Republicans saw those remarks and they ain't laughing. They're pissed that they got even grouped in with that stuff. So it's kind of like I just sat there and kind of like it, it's funny because of the generalizations, but generalizations suck. No, I know. So, and, and the thing is, he I think he just made it worse on Twitter. To be honest, that's but, definitely a possibility. And, and by the way, Sonic Fox, the, I doubt you watch our content, but if you did, I don't. I don't have anything against you, man. Yeah, believe what you want to believe. Enjoy your life. Um, I'm. I just don't believe in having to force, um, force your generalizations like they're like like it's a 100 fact, right? Like, sure, a lot of Republicans are a certain way, but not all of them. 
My dad's not that way. My my dad's a staunch Roman Catholic. He's not against gay marriage. He thinks the church is wrong. Mm-hmm. But what well, you know? What do you? Yeah. <laughs> what the, are you gonna do? Yeah. Um. You know, he's not like he has the power to change that. Yeah. He ma- he makes it known, and that's the end of that. Um. So I don't know. Uh. Besides that, uh, other <laughs> things at the Game Awards uh, that I. Let me see. I I I basically enjoyed. I I think this is the best game awards for handing out awards yet. Uh, none of them were handed out during commercial breaks. Yeah. And by the way, Jeff Keighley, thank you so much for actually making the commercial breaks a lot smaller and a, seem a lot less sponsored. It was basically game trailers and then the truth ads. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was fine. And you only had, what, like six instances of that in three hours? Yeah, that's something that, like that's that, not yeah. that bad. That's, not that's right, awesome. For sure. And you need – and sometimes it's not just – people paying for the ad space you need that time to change things up on stage yeah yeah for sure performance and stuff like like you need those breaks to to be more natural feeling so that didn't bother me uh i I was actually fine with that i know some people didn't wasn't sure about the truth ads and i'm like yeah no one knows that that really hits with the youth but i mean they're trying i don't know that i could have did that's better better nothing i mean yeah i mean they could just not try it at all no i shouldn't say that but yeah (laughs) but yeah i'm i think uh i i think in general the the actual awards see I'm one of those rare people. I don't like. I don't want to say I don't care about the announcements at the Game Awards, but the awards matter more to me. I know everyone gets hyped, like, oh, we're going to see Metro Prime 4, or oh, we're going to see this, or we're going to see that, yeah. or I'm only watching for the announcements. I get that. I get that's mm-hmm. why a lot of you tune in. But just like the Oscars, just like the Emmys, I tune in to see who's going to win. Mm-hmm. I don't care about the performances or the announcements or the new movie trailers or whatever they want to show. Yeah, I care about who's going to win because... Um, especially if it's a category where I played everything and I'm like, okay, I have some strong thoughts on this. So let's, let's go. Um, I didn't know who was going to win game of the year. I kind of assumed it was going to be red dead and yeah, got a war. I was right. very shocked that it was got a war and not, not red dead, especially those red dead won, I think one or two more awards overall than it won basically everything except for, I think no, got a war won two cared, awards one before category that it was got a, got a war won for. three total awards. I, and I think at the time, but I don't think. I think Red Dead had won three, and God Award won two, mm-hmm. heading into the Game of the Year award. They might have actually tied, mm. but because because one because the, the second oh, oh like when God Award won one award, the second award was also announced at that same time. Remember? Yeah, that was yeah, yeah. that were the one of the two companies. It was them and I think Fortnite that went up. Where yeah, they both got two awards yeah. at the same time, uh, which to me is fine. That's a way to quicken the pace a bit. Like if you're like, oh this this right. game won multiple awards. Right. I right. mean, granted, they didn't do it with Red Dead, but uh, Red Dead's awards were more spread out. Yeah. Did they, they need? To, a, did they need to be more spread out? I don't know, I don't know. but, but uh, uh, I think sometimes it might not even been planned to be that way. It might have just been, oh, look at the time. Okay, yeah, well, right. we we can quit. Right. We make out two awards right now instead of right, right. dragging well, for it sure, down. for sure. Um, but I like the awards, man. Yeah, and uh, and I kind of like how Jeff does it. One, he lets the public have a say. Yeah, we only count for ten percent of the vote in total. But that's probably but not a bad thing. I don't think fans should count for one hundred percent of the vote, anyways. No. because fans are fanboys. Ma- yeah. massive fanboys and we're gonna just keep voting for our favorites even like as an example Octopath Traveler might have won an award if fans voted but does, did it deserve to win one over all the other games I don't know you could argue a soundtrack you could argue but I don't know yeah, right, right right I mean and yeah. the thing is I'm biased right I didn't play all the games so I'm right. completely biased and so are many of you everyone is um, so I think that uh, the way he does it is nice he's got his panel which obviously uh, there, there's there's the panel of judges, and you could think it's flawed because it's members of the media, and I know how you guys think about members of the yeah, media, yeah, yeah. but um, I think it's nice to have them mixed with uh, fan voting. I think it kind of equalizes out a little bit. Because uh, obviously they're not going to have Reggie and, and Phil Spencer, so they're not going to vote because they're, they're going to have obvious, well, what game was on my system? Mm-hmm. That's the one. Yeah. You know, and they're on the board, so they already help shape the awards anyway. So mm-hmm. uh, I think, in general, the actual awards were really, really well handled this year. Um, I don't know if there was, uh, besides Sonic Fox's really shocking yeah. end of his speech anyways. Yeah. I wasn't shocked for anything else he did. That's just Sonic Fox right, right, Sonic right. Fox. Yeah. Um, I guess the ending was him, too. He just had to make it controversial. Yeah. Uh, the rest, I don't know if there was any memorable speeches this year. Not speeches. No. Um, but, uh, yeah, because, like... It felt like every every year there's been like a memorable speech. Well, Sonic Foxes was a memorable speech. Yeah, but, but for the wrong, wrong reason. But like you know, for like a yeah. good positive reason. Right, 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 right. Um, 
I mean, well, I the, mean, the, the interview guy... with the guy from Away Out was was really cool, especially when oh, he kept looking. Yeah. He kept no, this year he kept looking yeah. away from the camera, looking oh, yeah, yeah. at the crowd. Yeah, the he's just like, "What? Well, this is awesome! Yeah, Look the, what you're doing!" Yeah, the, the camera's like, well, behind maybe you. we'll see you. Yeah. Like Jeff already knows he didn't yeah. win. Maybe yeah. we'll see you later tonight. Yeah. He's like, "That would be awesome!" Yeah, and it's like he's not gonna win. Right, That's right, the whole right. reason he's on right now yeah. is because he's not gonna win. If he was gonna win. And I, I picked I picked his game to win that category just because I wanted him on stage. Yeah, right. Because I knew if he got like last year, didn't really win an award, still got to say F the Oscars. Oh, right. Imagine if he won an award. All right. What he would say. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like oh, I really God. wanted him. To, but like I think Jeff knew that, so he's like, okay, we gotta have this interview with him yeah. because everybody liked him for sure. You for know. Sure. And I like one thing I liked about him doing that interview is even though Jeff clearly was like, okay, man, like. Just like last year, like, are what you, are you doing? He, are you okay? Looking up, like, are you are, high? Are you, are you, are you sane? good? <laughs> um, I think I think what it was nice of Jeff doing that for was he was saying, look, that moment last year, we're not ashamed of that moment, right? right. And when he came out and said after the Oscars and and you're and the people on the internet, are like, oh, this is why the gaming awards will never be taken seriously. He's like, dude, this, he's as gamer as it gets, man. Yeah, right. Like, it's okay. He's not offending anyone. Well, maybe people uh, that are part uh, of the, the Oscars. Oscars. <laughs> he's offending the Oscars, <laughs> but. Uh, he's not offending any gamers, and like this is ultimately a gamer show. Yeah, it's supposed to be for gamers. Yeah, and I think Jeff does a very good job of that, and I think that's right. why right. some people are like, oh, I only tune in for the game reveals, and I think he knows that, mm-hmm. and that's why he tries to make it a, an event mm-hmm. uh, where you know you got like six awards per hour or whatever, with ten awards per hour, yeah, and you mix in all this other stuff, yeah, and yeah, the pre-show is still a little strange. I wish <laughs> why that, like, it's a pre-show. I don't know. They're still they handing out else, awards. They're not handing. Stage. I know, but they're handing out awards. They're doing all this. It's 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 part of the show. Well, it's of course not it is. pre-show. Oh, well, why do you think it kept advertising that it all starts at seven thirty? I mean, literally, seven thirty start time was everywhere. But then it starts, and you're like, oh, but the actual show's in a half hour. It's like, nah, the show started. Yeah, this is part of the show. Yeah. Um, I don't know why you pretend it's not. I guess yeah, right. I, the only way I could think about it is for like his back end organization reasons. Like he marks mm-hmm. that's the half hour pre show. This is the main stage event. Mm-hmm. This is the main event, and it's like I kind of get that because that happens at uh, sometimes at WrestleMania and stuff. If you go, there'll be like a pre event before the main event that's, mm-hmm. that's televised. Mm-hmm. Granted, this whole thing is televised, but um, I, I think it, he looks at it more like that. It's like right. the pre show to the main stage. Right, right. So it's just this weird terminology. It's just like he, when he calls things world premieres, yeah. world exclusive, yeah, and right. like like exclusive premiere. Yeah, right. Or like, like you never know. Like, well, okay, is this an unannounced game or is this right. a game we've already seen? This right, is a right, new trailer. Right, yeah, it's but, just his fancy wording he uses that honestly just builds hype. Yeah, uh, he is. He's pretty good with the hype. I got one more one more positive thing. What's that? That I want Marvel Ultimate Alliance three. That coming straight to Switch and exclusive, even if it's timed exclusive, that was probably my f- most favorite moment of the Game Awards because I love Ultimate Alliance. So, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, was it the Blackwater? No. Um, the Black something. Black something. Um, I can't remember. So here's the thing. I've never played an Ultimate Alliance game. I did the research, you know, started back on PSP that came to 360 and, and blah, blah, blah. And there was a one game and then a second game and a couple, like, different versions of the second game. Uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 is exclusive on Switch. And that's what really caught me off guard. Not so much that it's coming because, well, I mean, it's a little shocking because it's been a long time. It's been a really long time since there's been a new Marvel Ultimate Alliance game. The Black Order. The Black Order. So it, it's been a long time. But exclusive? Yeah, right. That means Nintendo ponied up. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's not so shocking. I found out the, the game is being made by Team Ninja. Uh, Team Ninja is also the team that's been making the, the Fire Emblem Warriors, been making the Hyrule Warriors. So it's like, oh, oh, so this is their next Switch game. Mm-hmm. Oh. Gotcha. So Nintendo ponied up for some Marvel licensing Mm -hmm. and ponied up for an IP that no one wanted to renew because it's been forever. And now they've got one of the teams they trust from third parties making it and Nintendo's publishing it. That is, I don't know how much it costs, but I like it. This is like another Bayonetta move. Mm -hmm. It's another Bayonetta move. It's saving an IP that hasn't been touched in a while because it didn't sell well enough or whatever the reasons are. Yeah. Um, maybe it's licensing issues. Well, they figured it out. Yeah, yeah. They did something right. Uh, and describe the Ultimate Alliance games. I've never played one. We saw the footage. 
Well, hopefully they bring back a lot, some of the other RPG elements, but uh, basically... Well, it's, it's an RPG. RPG, yep. yeah. Um, RPG, you, you play as a number... You could play as a number of multiple different uh, Marvel, uh, Marvel characters. characters. Um, you generally have a squad of four that you can run around with. Um, multiplayer. You, and you just kind of go through different whatever story that they have. Is it kind of like Diablo, but you control multiple characters? Or the no. old school Dragon Age, where it was kind of top down a little bit, and you controlled multiple. No, you don't control multiple. You can okay. only control one character. The other ones are AI, AI, okay. or or if your friends are playing. Sure. Um, and you can do that in right. you can do that in uh, Dragon Age, or yep. you can just let it be AI the yep. whole time. Granted, um, you have more control. Yeah. Um, y- your t- your characters tend to be a little bit more broken than the other ones, but you know it's it is what it is. Um, At least in the past, right? Um, yeah. So I mean, that's that's pretty much the sum of the game. It's there's not a whole lot to it, but it, it it's actually they took actually some of it out, some of the RPG elements out in the second one versus the first one, which I hope they bring back. But uh, just some of the they they took out some of the like your different moves. They took out a couple of other things. I can't remember exactly offhand what they all took out, but it was quite disappointing to see them take it out. So I'm hoping they put it all back in and uh, bring us back a decent story. And because the stories the other two were fantastic but well um, another thing like bottom line are you buying it oh yeah okay just had to ask yeah yeah had to ask because um we're gonna do a little topic later but there's a certain game you haven't bought yet that really surprises me yeah but we'll get into that yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get into that uh, in the next topic because I, I i do i we're almost done with the game awards but i just want to i just kind of want to throw like my general feelings out there and I know um, I have one thing. You, you have one major criticism. The one major, major criticism. Uh, my thing with the Game Awards is I thought this was the best one yet. Um, despite not having a memorable speech, you can't help that. That's based on who wins, what awards, what they're going to say. Uh, I know there's some controversy over some people thinking, who, you know, the content creator award being like Ninja, should there be like a streamer award than an actual content creator award because there's a whole bunch of like, yeah. it felt like all the right, people right, that were right. nominated for it were live streamers. Where were the people? Really where were the people cool. doing the original work? Heck, where she says boundary yeah, break, right? Exactly. You know, stuff like, like, yeah, this, stuff like, like that. Yeah. I'm not saying me, by the way. I'm not saying yeah. that I don't have a position to be like you know. If Greg Miller can can win, I mean, obviously someone like me should be able to qualify. I'm not saying that I'm big enough and that I have enough influence to qualify, which I do think is a key part of this. Because I mean, you can be an amazing creator, but if you don't have a lot of influence on enough people, I can see why maybe that automatically disqualifies you. But I think there are plenty of really big creators, especially on YouTube, that uh, definitely should have got some recognition or at least nominated, even if you wanted to and keep it, Ninja in there, which, which would just obviously hand them the award. Actually, what would be kind but, of cool if you're going to do, you know, these content creators, have a small content creator award. So you, you get like a, a couple of small channels out there that hey, this, these guys are actually doing really well, even though they're tiny. Yeah, uh, I can think of one right now. Uh, not talking about us, because yeah, yeah, I'm technically a small content creator, but there's plenty that are smaller than me. Uh, give give you an example. There's that Simon Love channel. Yeah, Simon oh, Love yeah. Roms. Yep. Simon Love Ridge. Roms. Look Ridge. him up. What? Simon Loveridge. Oh, so, yeah, Simon Loveridge. Sorry. I know he was shouted all once by Philip DeFranco as the mystery link of the day, uh, but he wasn't really shouted. That he just Philip DeFranco does like a mystery link every day, and mm-hmm. if you click on it, it's you know random YouTube on video that his team liked. Mm-hmm. Um, so he got a little attention from that. But he's a really dinky YouTuber that does all these metal covers of video game yeah. music I mean, that are awesome. You had and, the one video. On yeah, it. yeah. We actually have a video up on our channel. One that he let us put up is kind of it's basically an ad for him. It's basically this content's awesome. We'll yeah. check out more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. And. It really is awesome. And it, is. it is. I'm not it's even fantastic. into metal, yeah. and I think it's awesome. So, uh, you know, giving giving someone like that um, a, a shot to win, mm-hmm. uh, you know, maybe if, if you know, I know Smooth McGrew's on a little bit of a comeback, and he's not necessarily small. He's got a couple million, but uh, someone like him who does that all those acapella covers, right? Uh, if he has a killer year this year, I don't think would have been a good year to pick him, but other years probably would have been a great year to pick him. Uh, so, so stuff like that, and. It doesn't necessarily need to be someone who's inspiring or whatever. Like, obviously, when Greg Miller won, it was inspiring because, one, um, he is someone who went from traditional media and IGN to his own company. Uh, and his own company, and kind of funny, being fan-funded and doing all this YouTube stuff, which was an amazing story on top of the fact that he conquered cancer. So, mm-hmm. like, it was literally, like, the ideal 
um, combination of things to make for what was going to end up being an, an excellent award for him and an excellent mm-hmm. speech where, you know, thankfully he didn't make any of it about him. Uh, he talked about all the little guys in game development that don't get shout outs, the art artists and, and the programmers that do all the grunt work that are putting 80 hours a weekend that no one knows their name. Um, and it was a really cool speech, but you're not going to get speeches like that every year, uh, regardless of who, who gets nominated, uh, because you don't want to base your nomination on just who's going to give a good speech. Um, you want to base right, it on right, people right. who you think deserve it. And the, I know the voting process goes through the panel and they try to figure out, you know, narrow it down. Um, and it's hard for me to be like, oh, yeah, like Reggie fils is going to pay attention to all these little YouTubers. Of course mm-hmm. he's not. No. But, you know, that's why you hire a team oh, yeah, that yeah, kind of yeah. pays attention and looks for it and, 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 and sees what they can do. Um, and it's easy for me to say because I'm a small YouTuber, so I'm a lot more aware of other small YouTubers, mm-hmm. I think. And I think the bigger you get, um, I, I, I'll, I'll say this, like the bigger I get, the harder it is for me to even find YouTubers that have a thousand subs or less anymore. Yeah. I just don't even find them anymore because they don't pop up in my feed anymore. I'm seeing ones similar to my size or the ones that I always watch anyways that are massive. Yeah. And I think when you're massive, it's even harder to find it because you're always just finding other massive YouTubers. Um, because that's who you're associating with, that's who you correlate with, that's who you're meeting at events. Right. Uh, so it's it's an interesting situation, but I think uh, there's a way to do it, and I don't know exactly what the perfect way to do it is because I don't know that I want them to add a whole bunch of new awards. Mm-hmm. Um, right, right, I, right. I did talk about how I think one one thing that might be <clears throat> cool is splitting the show. Yeah. Where you have make it a two day event, um, and uh, you can do. Um, I, I can. I, thing is, I don't. <sighs> My problem with splitting the show is my entire idea is going to lessen the value of some awards. Right. And you could argue, oh, it already happens in the pre-show. I'm like, yeah, but he hands out awards like that during the show, too. So it's not really yeah, yeah. It's not really devalued. Yeah. Everyone's basically well, getting... Well, actually, it might actually add, add value to the awards because, you know, they actually might get fully mentioned. They might actually hit, get up, the, well, get up on stage like, and accept the award for it. My thing is, like, let's take, <clears throat> let's take all of the esports and, I don't know, multiplayer categories... Let's put them on their own thing the day before. Let's do like an hour, hour and a half show. Mm-hmm. Have it be all about a celebration of esports, a celebration of, uh, of of all of that stuff. The next day, have it be a celebration of uh, the whole of gaming. And that doesn't mm-hmm. mean an esports game can't win. A new esports game comes out that year. Great. Yeah. You can win one of those awards. Yeah. Um, but like best ongoing game, best multiplayer game even. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, You know, best... You know, all those esports award, best coach, best team, best player. I think all that could be like its own show. And I think the nice thing about that is I think what happens in this show, outside of what Sonic Fox said, is the rest of the esports awards, I think, kind of got overlooked. Yeah, kind of. And I'm not saying because they weren't on stage and they didn't. Like, no, they got they got to, to accept the awards and say, so, to say a little something. But I, I think uh, you could help he does all, a, well, he does all yeah. those early. Yeah. Because he knows the other awards are what people care about. Right, 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 right. Uh, and I think if you separate it out, so you have like this massive celebration of esports, um, I think that would be even better. Because imagine like if he had like an esports kind of specific show, yeah, esports beforehand. YouTube, so you have like the, you have the esports, esports awards, content. like you have the esports awards or the content creator awards with esports, however you want to split yeah. it up. Um, you could add a few more awards in if you want, yeah. and you could really focus it in. You can bring right. in, you can do things like, hey, bring in the top two rated players for Smash Bros Ultimate next year and have them. Battle it out yep. on stage in front of that audience. Battle it out for the and award. An e- in an esports award ceremony, <laughs> having like two of the top Smash Bros players, two of the top Tekken, two of the top, like, like just having that. I'm not saying have a mini tournament. Battle it out for the award. I mean, you could. In theory, <laughs> each year you could pick a game and do a mini tournament. Yeah. But uh, that, yeah. that would be kind of cool throughout throughout the, the awards. Or, or just make it, the finals. It, it, make it, the finals of the mini tournament on that. Yeah, I don't know. I on, mean, I think, it, whatever. The point is yeah. that you could really cater it to yeah. that crowd better. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and I don't want to feel like it diminishes anything. I think no. what it does is it treats esports like... It actually brings it into light Yeah, a I think more. it brings esports into the mainstream a little bit more. Yeah. Maybe? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's already on cable TV. So, I don't know. Right. I mean, granted, the number one one, uh, the number one last time I looked was Candy Crush, which, believe it or not, I, I did watch... Uh, I did watch a little tournament of Candy Crush, and I'm like, you know what? It's pretty intense. Yeah. I got I got to say, I thought I was good at Candy Crush. There, mm, no, no, yeah, yeah. no, I'm no, I'm not good. <laughs> I'm not good. I could, you're like, oh, it's the stupidest. I'm like, watch one of the actual esports tournaments. You will understand there are some skill levels in that mm-hmm. game that you had never dreamed were possible. Oh, right. No, for sure. Just like watching Tetris. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, and the thing is, Tetris has been around so long, we just accept the skill. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's right? there in Candy Crush. Well, Believe Candy Crush has been around views for Candy, a long it's, while, too. It's, oh, Candy Crush so. is just this negative thing, all these microtransactions, and it's such, such a bad thing in gaming. I'm like, yeah. watch. I'm telling you, it's entertaining as yeah. hell. Yeah. I, I don't know why, by the way. I don't even like Candy Crush anymore. You're right. But it's entertaining to watch, competitive yeah. for that. It's just so exciting. So much stuff happening. And you're like, ha, huh, what? Yeah, How that? did they come back? No. No, it was a setup the whole match? Yeah. No. <laughs> Oh, good lord. How, what? It's like chess. How did you see that move coming at the end? Anyways, not quite a chess, but yeah, right, different right, sport. Right. Yeah. Different board game sport. Yes. I guess they call it a sport, technically. Sport of the mind. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I, I think that's one thing that I would change up. And then, uh, one, it makes a show. No one has to sit down for three straight hours, right. which doesn't bother me. No, but it can. There are parts that seem to get drawn out. But I also think it also leaves you so. more playroom, so you don't. So you could hand out every award without having to be like, oh, and this game won this. Yeah. Which only happened, I think, twice, which is way down from what it used right. to be. Uh, including, you know, announcing an award the next day. That didn't right. happen. Uh, <laughs> and uh, giving more time uh, for specific Things. You can even you can even give a little bit more time for speeches if. As do. an example, if they had done yeah. this this year, I mean, can you imagine? Like the audience reacted pretty well to that Persona Five announcement mm-hmm. for Switch. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the you know Joker character in Smash, like they they reacted really really cool. But if it was an esports crowd, oh yeah, Woo! those guys are nuts. Woo! You would have got like live. Press conference, E3, greatest moment kind of reaction. Oh, yeah. If it had been an esports only kind of award ceremony where it, it, it culminated in that. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right when Smash Bros. Ultimate's about to enter the esports? Oh, right, man. right. Um, it would have been insane. Yeah. So that's another thing, too. And they're like, well, what about the other audience? I'm like, well, Nintendo might have had to have a double banger, huh? Yeah. Maybe they would have had to bring Bayonetta 3 of Metro Prime. Mm, just saying. Yeah. Double yeah. banging up. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. That's just me. Oh, no, I, my, I, my, I my wishes I and my dreams. Uh, but here's the thing. As just a single show, which, by the way, I mean, one reason he doesn't do it is basically planning two shows, which, I mean, he from what from what I heard um, from Danny O'Dwyer, like, Jeff Keighley's journey on this show, like, it takes him, like, nine months to put together this one show. Hmm. And because, like, he doesn't mess around. He is traveling to these studios, mm-hmm. talking to them. Anything they want to show. What are they comfortable with? Yeah. How do you want it shown? Yeah. Um, we think this game <laughs> might get nominated. <laughs> you you know, mean, are you going to have mean, people here for it? You mean not as a, hey, look, let's check out the nominees. Oh, wait, that was a uh, Mortal, Mortal Com- Kombat. And here's the thing. Some people were telling yeah. me that that moment was uh, was planned, right? And I'm just I, like, I'm just like, maybe, I, go, I went back and re- I went back but, and rewatched it. And I'm just like, I don't know, man. It looked like one, he was cut off. Yeah. And then when he came back on, he was still on the stage, and he's like, uh, okay, well, here's the actual nominee." Yeah, right. And I'm just like, yeah, it could have been staged, but it didn't feel like it, yeah. been, like it was staged. Yeah. It did not feel like it was staged at all. It felt like someone hit a wrong button in the back. Yeah. Um, but, again, maybe it was staged. Right. Yeah, you never know. You know, just like, obviously, the, the Smash Bros. one for sure was staged. Jeff's talking, like, later on, we have Game of the Year, and all the lights go out. Like, okay, this stage. Yeah. Because you see him turn like this, and he's like, it's like, okay, Jeff, you know. You <laughs> set up the show, Jeff. You yeah, can't yeah, fool me. Yeah, right? you, yeah. you know what's happening yeah. every moment in this show. Yeah. Besides maybe that slip up. Maybe. Yeah. Then we'll, we're not going to know unless, right, right, unless right. Jeff comes out so and addresses says, yeah. it publicly and be yeah. like, yeah, that, that, was, a, that, that was a planned thing. There, or, or that, that was, was oops, a or that, that was, was a, a, yeah. Yeah. I hit, the wrong, <laughs> I hit the wrong button. I hit the wrong button. I had yeah. a little clicker yeah. in my pile of my own. It's just oh, the Mortal, I had the Mortal Kombat button and I just bumped it. He was ready for Mortal Kombat. But anyways... Uh, I thought it was a good overall show, best yet. And uh, as I said, my only criticism is just I think it would have been better to split it up. But again, I know how much work. Like, mm-hmm. here's the thing mm-hmm. I've always respected Jeff Keeley, the Doritos Pope, the Mountain Dew and Doritos Pope, <laughs> from all the old sponsorships <laughs> they used to have to pedal the Mountain Dew oh, and all the stuff during gosh. the Game Awards and their, during their game trailer shows. Uh, the thing is, like, I have a lot of respect for what he does for oh, the yeah. show, um, the work he put in, the fact that the very first show he paid completely out of pocket. Like, such a big risk. If that didn't go well for him, he's out all that money and he's never getting it back. Right. And that's the end of the Game Awards. And mm-hmm. that wouldn't be it anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, without Jeff Keighley, there is no Game Awards. I don't know if people understand that. Even if you don't care about Game game Awards, you don't care about this Game of the Year, you prefer some YouTubers Game of the Years or IGNs or whatever, that's fine because everyone's going to have goatees going on this time of oh, year yeah, yeah. Or, or in January next yeah. year. And I get that. But I think there's something special about trying to make it this big event uh, and even if you aren't into that, a lot of people are, like me. 
Mm-hmm. At least I hope a lot of people are. Like, I mean, 26 million people tuned in. I'm assuming a lot of people are yeah. pretty excited about just the awards themselves. And uh, I'm glad that an event like this exists. And for that, I mean, Jeff Keighley, thank you so much for the hard work you put into this show. Every year. I can't imagine, like, I, I, I've been hearing some crazy things about your travel schedule, not being able to see your family very much because of That's it. That's nuts. Um, you know, yeah, you get your little lull after the game awards, but it starts picking up as you get towards E3 because you're part of the YouTube gaming staff yep. and helping do YouTube cover, or coverage for, for E3. And, man, I mean, I'm hoping you're getting a nice deserved vacation now, man, because you put on a hell of a show. Yeah, right. Um, but, you know, as I say, the best of the best never sleep. Like, everyone's hoping, oh, Sakurai, he's going to get a break. Right? He doesn't want a break. He's yeah. a workaholic. Yeah. Yeah, you might get done with Smash and you just write into the next project. Okay, what was your criticism? Your, your one big stick. My one big thing was their lack of use of graphics. Like, they'd, they'd introduce these people who are supposed to introduce the awards. They'd come out and start talking. It, if you didn't hear who they were, or if you don't know who they are, it, or if you just can't hear, period, and you don't have closed captioning on, how hard is it to throw their name up underneath them? Yeah. It, so uh, you have a game that that won Fortnite. It won an award. They just nonchalantly mentioned, "Hey, it also won best multiplayer." How hard is that to throw it up on a graphic underneath the underneath on the screen? It, it's Yeah. To give you an example, like obviously I can't do anything about it in the audio version of this podcast, but in the video, although the last podcast didn't have it cuz I rushed the editing. Uh, in the video version of the podcast, normally at the beginning, at some point, either when we say our names or if we forget to, because it happens, uh, we have a little banners pop up to say, hey, this is Nintendo Rebel Chance, this is Eric Moore. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe we don't give you a lot of details after that. I think our Twitter handles are yes, in there. But but besides that, we don't give you a lot of details, but it doesn't matter. At least you know, okay, this is that Nathaniel Rebel Chance guy. I could go look him up if I want to. Right. Figure out what's up with that. Obviously, he's for this place, but right. you know. Um, and... We, we do that uh, because, yeah, some people might miss it. Or, uh, you know, they're playing it on a video, and uh, they're like, wait, who's that other guy besides Nate? Because a lot of you guys will know me because I, I do everything on the channel. Maybe you don't hear Eric all the time. Like, wait, who's that other guy again? Yeah. And you're like, back up. Oh, oh Eric Moore. Okay. Yeah. Um, does that matter to you? Does that make Eric more important? No, but I think it's just important for um, reasons. Just like when we – reasons. I hate yeah. that. I hate that. For reasons. For reasons. For, for all the reasons that he brought up. Uh, just like when we mentioned, you know, hey, because where's that Patreon? Like, then we brought up the Patreon banner. Because, uh, one, it's good advertisement. And, two, it also just it visualizes the audio. And you can't do that with everything. You know, if you want it with everything, turn on closed captions. It goes on 100%. But, right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I do agree that, uh, especially because it's a live stream, um, that they could... They could do something. I don't know that it all depends. Well, I mean, it doesn't really depend because even if they don't, even if they legitimately don't know who won until like the day of the show, you could just have graphics ready for everything. He has people. Yeah. You can just have graphics ready for everything. And yeah, someone might hit the wrong button or screwed up, but you know what? It's better than not they, trying. They ran a, f- they, we supposedly think they ran a uh, trailer without when it well, was supposed to. Like, so it's, it's worth, it happens. Well, like basically, you know, uh, you have the you have the but, banner come out like it happens on the the ESPYS mm-hmm. happens it happens they come out and they like the presenter coming out comes right. out and does the thing yeah exactly and then when the person wins comes out and does the thing and then sometimes shows a highlight reel or whatever who well, won and, and, and the one thing is too is with how much time is between when they you know when they announce the award and the people are walking up to stage if you have a background and all you need to do is throw a name and and if they want anything else on that on that and then slide it in it takes two seconds. Yeah, it, it it's it's really not. I I'm pretty sure I could figure out how to do that, and I don't really know a whole lot about video editing. And I think it, it's really not that hard. Like I, I'll, I'll say this: I'm not good with the animated stuff. Um, but it, like all, all it has to do is just appear and disappear. It's but but there's automated like I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't do it during live stream, so I'm not. Right. I'm, not I'm not the best to talk to about how to do it live, but I know it can be done. So I, I don't know. I it, it's something that I I agree that can work on. I'm not as critical about it as you are. I don't think it's well, an I, essential it's, thing. It's I, more of a I, nice to have. It's more of a. But it's more of a for me. I ha- I don't have. There was the a mo- yeah, There hearing. was a moment too that you didn't. Know, I don't have you the greatest hearing. I don't have the greatest hearing. So it's 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 one of those things that if because we were talking and it was like, oh, wait, what happened? We I mean we both missed the fact that Fortnite won multiplayer. Yeah, I know. It it, it would have been easily fixed if they would have just popped up saying this. You know, they oh, won maybe. this one and then. If, if we were looking at the screen at the time. 
Right, but <laughs> I mean, if we're both not really not paying attention that bad, then, well, then well, yeah. the thing is, it's a live but, stream. So right. for like, uh, if I was watching it on my own, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have missed anything. That's the right. thing. But I, it was a live stream, and um, you know, we're entertaining, we're conversing, we're trying to, you know, make the stream a bit more than just the game awards, and you know, right. things happen. Uh, speaking of a bit more than the game awards, okay. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, yeah, it's out, yeah. So quick summary on this game before uh, we get into our thoughts on it and uh, why a certain <clears throat> someone doesn't own it yet. You're probably like, I might eventually be the only Switch owner that doesn't. Yeah, right. Um, the game has become the fastest selling game in Nintendo's entire history in Japan. Um, it, during its launch week, it sold, Famitsu and MediaCrate both have it around 1.24 million. Uh, now you might be like, oh, but that's not the best ever because Pokemon uh, Silver and Gold launched at 1.4 million. Sure, with zero digital sales included in those numbers. Zero digital sales included. These are just physical sales. The so 1.1 million? The 1.24 million yeah. was just physical. physical. I'm sorry. I'm willing to go on a limb and say at least 200,000 people bought it digitally. Bought it digitally. Probably. When, like the percentage in Japan is like 35% of people buy digital, buy their games digitally in Japan. 35% of 1.2 million is way more than enough to get you past that just, threshold. Just a little bit. So assuming this matter, and the thing is a lot more people, at least in the U.S., seem to be buying it digitally for, for some, probably because they didn't want to, they wanted to actually play it at midnight is what yeah. I assume. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's. I'm guaranteed it is. It'll it'll come out with Nintendo's official numbers. Um, you know, at, in January 31st when they have their fiscal report, mm-hmm. uh, which that'll be a fun one to talk about. But yeah, it's the fastest selling game ever in the 30 plus year history of, of them as a video game company, um, and the fastest Nintendo published game because they they didn't develop Pokemon. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's right. Game Freak. But uh, so that happened. Uh, it quickly became the best-selling switch game uh the best launch switch in a uh, lot the best launch for a switch game in the uk uh and it beat out uh the previous combined best in pokemon let's go beach let's go ev by i don't know was it four thousand units or something so it was tight mm-hmm. but it but it but it came out on top we don't have any u.s numbers at the time of the recording maybe we do by the time you hear this uh mm-hmm. it's it, it seems to be I mean, a lot of people are projecting when we finally do hear numbers that launch numbers could be 5 million worldwide, 6 million worldwide. Dang. Um, potentially. And by the end of December, maybe high, we'll hit 10 million. Uh, one of the most, like one of the biggest retailers in all of Japan sold out of physical copies. Uh, I have now censored that a bunch of smaller retailers are also sold out. Uh, and that's in Japan. I don't know what it's like here in the United States because, I mean, I have the game digitally. Didn't go to stores. Didn't see what their copies were like. Mm-hmm. Uh, so who knows? Maybe they're completely sold out in our area too. I know there's been sellouts of a few online retailers, but they were like restocked the next day. Uh, so whether or not they were actually sold out or they just needed to go check the warehouse and see if they had copies. Or maybe they had more shipments coming and they already knew this was going to happen. Who knows? Yeah. Um, it's, it's also could be that they know how much is in the storage, but they only they made sure that they had enough for a backup just in case it did sell out and they could just restock. What we're saying the is there's yeah. a potential... That Super Smash Bros. Ultimate might have launched at numbers that are the best in Nintendo history, worldwide. That's Not crazy. just Japan, worldwide. It's possible. Uh, that that doesn't necessarily mean the game's going to maintain that momentum. Right. And become the best well, selling. Well, it's kind of hard to Nintendo maintain that momentum when you know eventually you get to the point where you know all the switches have. <laughs> when you sell more switches. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, but. Yeah, it's it, it'll be interesting to see where the numbers are at the end of December, as you know where the numbers are get once DLC starts rolling out. Uh, there, there's going to be a lot of interesting things, and obviously I think the Persona hype helped because there might have been people that were kind of on the fence, like, "Oh crap, Persona!" Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Uh, and then you have to spend extra money to get that DLC fighter pass. Uh, so that's just the general just what's happening. Lots and lots of hype. Um, so. That all aside, that's like the summary of the sales and the kind of the news around it. It's, it's got really high review scores, like a 93, 94 on Metacritic. Mm-hmm. Um, to be expected, I think it's like the number four highest rated game of the year. Um, ironically, not up for game of the year. In fact, I don't think a Smash Bros. game has ever been up for game of the year at the major outlets. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but it released in a month where it's kind of hard to... Sque- hey, the thing is, it might still be game of the year at some major outlets that do their, their awards at the end of the year. But it, Could it be up for game of the year next year, though? 
it, because it would qualify, for, but it by the, it never happened. Like Xenoblade Chronicles two didn't qualify for any or didn't I don't say didn't qualify. It wasn't elected for any awards this year, and that was a yeah. December game, right? And clearly should have been an, an RPG of the year if Octopath Traveler is right because well, I mean it was good. It'd be kind of hard for game of the year this year on this year's game awards because well, no, it, it wasn't out based on the timing. No, yeah. but I, I think. That's that's another I guess that's another criticism of the game awards is I think it should happen in January but that's just me I think you should give time for all games to come out or February if you need time to like for all games to release and then a process but whatever that's just me uh, I do think that well you know what let's just get into your thoughts so here's the deal I've obviously played Super Smash Bros Ultimate I played a decent amount of it I'm not gonna act like I'm good at it because as I said earlier I suck I'm, I'm one of the worst players in the world at the game. I'm, I I played uh, like World of Light. I was doing it on hard. You guys saw on live stream how much I suck. Uh, but I'm slogging through. I'm getting there. Uh, Eric played it for his first time today. I did. So before, well, well, not counting E3. the World of Light. Yes, e- World not, of Light. Not, not yes. counting E3. Not yes. counting the basic Smash thing at, at E3. Yes, yes. Okay, first time. Uh, the first time you played the actual retail game. Right. Here's here's my thing. Before I get into what your thoughts are so far on very limited time, hour hour and a half with World of Light. Yeah. Why didn't you pick up Smash Bros? I just haven't been to the store. I don't know. I just I, <sighs> terrible excuse. Yeah, I'd, you picked up Pokemon Day One. Granted, we told the people that would happen. Right. Um, you picked up Mario Odyssey Day One. That was a no doubter for you. You picked up yeah. Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Yeah. Day one. Yeah. You obviously picked up Breath of the Wild day one. What I did? Oh, what? Crap. No, that that wasn't the game that convinced you to buy no, the Switch. Not at all. Um I I, I, so, I just don't And I, you're I don't someone who yeah. I know almost more than me picks up Smash Bros. Almost every time. I didn't even get it for three D S. Yeah, I got it for three D S. I got yeah, I, had credit, that, I had it on Wii U. I had but I mean I had the sixty four in the three DS version. That's the only. Smash well, you didn't have a game. You didn't have a GameCube though. No, that was why. Otherwise, yeah. you would have probably had the GameCube. Yeah. And I don't think. You, did you have a Wii? Yeah, we had a Wii. But, but you, you didn't have Smash for it. Okay. No. Was it like the family Wii? Yeah. Oh, it's a little different. Then. Yeah. Um. Not gonna get those well, the six, hardcore. Sixty four was the sixty four was the family. Yeah, you were a kid. Yeah. Okay. Your family system playing Conker's Bad Fur Day. Get out of here, okay? <laughs> that was yeah, pretty buddy. much your system. Yeah, you I know. It more than anyone. Yeah, I know. I Just know. like, oh, my N64 was the family system too, but I'm the one that played it. This yeah. Bad. This is my yeah, N64. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. I move out, it's mine. <laughs> yeah, there is that. <laughs> so, you you didn't pick it up. Like, the other game, that the reason I brought up the other games is, like, I think Pokemon, you felt obligated. Breath mm-hmm. of the Wild was what sold you the system, but the other games, you didn't have to pick up day one. There was no pressure. No. But you did. I did. So, to me, I feel like there's something about... So, what, are you not hyped for this game? I... Yeah, I, 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 I think I am. I just... I am just so busy right now between work and everything. It's it's just... I don't well, know. Shouldn't that be all the more reason to have it? Yeah, right. Smash Bros. Yeah. is like the quick the quickness of the match. It's perfect to play on your breaks. Yeah. When you need a moment to release some stress. Yeah. It's even well, more perfect than some of the other games on the Switch. Yeah. yeah you know. need to invest a lot more time into it. Heck, yeah. and I know, like, I know, and this is just me knowing you, yeah, you haven't beat, like, all the games you have. Yeah. And that's fine because, as you said, you're busy, you play them when you can, you enjoy them when you do play them. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the big thing for you, especially with the games you have, is, like, they're kind of games that need longer play sessions. Yeah. And when you do get those long play sessions, like you do at my house sometimes, mm-hmm. uh, you really enjoy it. And, uh, for sure, for sure. But that's why I thought maybe Smash might be perfect because you don't need a long play <sighs> session. Yeah, I don't. I, I just I, I don't have a reason. I really don't. I I just really I haven't been to the store. I haven't. He's not as hyped. The hype isn't real for him. It. I enjoy it. I enjoyed it when I played it at E3. I. I just I don't know. I don't know what it is. He's not as hyped. I mean that's what it is. You would have never did that with Breath of the Wild. No. So bottom line is you're just not as hyped. Not as hyped as Breath of the Wild. You're correct, yes. Crazy. It's, I mean, here's the thing. I'm obviously way more hyped for a Zelda game than anything else, but I'm completely a Zelda guy. For you, like Breath of the Wild was what got you into Zelda. Um, not that you hadn't played before, of course, right. but like what actually, like you went out and spent your money to play a Zelda game. Yeah. Didn't have to do it. Yeah. You did it because you wanted to. Yeah. Which was awesome. But awesome for me, too, because it's like, oh, now my fellow 
podcast guy actually yeah. plays the Switch. Yeah, right. Not instead of me talking about yeah. current stuff going on that yeah. he doesn't play. Uh, but I, I, just, I, I see here's the thing. I got this feeling. Um, I kind of felt we, when we talked about this back at E3 because um, we had a little conversation, our impressions on on Smash, um, and I got this feeling back then that you weren't feeling the magic that that I remember you feeling back oh, yeah, yeah. when we were kids. Yeah. Now, obviously, grow up, things are different, but yeah. Uh, for being the ultimate version of Smash, everyone is here. Like I remember when we saw that announcement, we were like, "What?" Well, uh, we were excited we were, by that. Well, yeah, and the sad part was is we were not too long before that we were just complaining that there was too many things in. But then it's like, but this yeah. is the only excuse, and, right? That I that I could handle right. was, was that. Oh, it's because and, you're trying to put every character that's ever right. In Smash and in. part of me still is. That's a lot of stuff in this game, though. Still, and, and that's and I don't know if that's part of it. Well, too many what characters. It, not even too many characters. You can unlock just them all in an hour and a half. Thing. Just a lot of different things in this game. Yeah, a lot of content. Yeah. Which, I mean, fantastic, but it's, oh, it's, it's almost... Over, yeah, I, I get that. But it's 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 one another one of those games that I haven't finished a lot of my games that I have now. And looking at it, it's like, oh, God, it's just another game that I'm not going to finish. Uh, you know you can play games forever, right? I know. It's just, I mean, sometime in the next however many years of your life, in another 40, 50 years, you're not going to not gonna get no. her done? Yeah. Yeah, right? No, because another Smash will come out. I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't that's know true. if there's another one after this. Yeah, it's true. This is insane, yeah, I got you the Smash game. No, it, it's it's not like I'm not going to pick it up. I, I probably will hear eventually. But I, I just I don't know why I didn't go Don't let my peer pressure get you. No, I'm not. No, no, it's not. It. I don't know. I just... I. I have no reason. I literally well, I, have I, no. I will, I will say this. So, so what you got to play today was some World of Light. Yeah, that's what you chose to play. Anyways. Yeah, it forced you to. You just right, went to right. it because that's the story mode, and you just right. wanted to get into I wanted to it. see what it looked like. Yeah. Um, now uh, we'll get to do some impressions of that, but I, I will say this: uh, for someone who might be worried, there's too much content for you to ever finish it. Unlike you know prior Smash games, one of those much much less. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm just like, I don't think he's playing the part of the game that's going to make it feel appealing to him. And this is, I guess, one of my criticisms of World of Light. Now, I'm playing in a hard mode, which those of you that have done World of Light know, even for people who are really, really good at Smash, hard mode is freaking hard. It It's cheap. Um, the bonuses they get from their guys are way more effective than the bonuses you get, even when you have the counters to them. It doesn't always work the greatest. Uh, and I'm not very good at Smash, so I'm torturing myself even worse. I'm sitting there watching you play on normal, and I'm just like, oh, normal's got to be a cakewalk compared to me. But you were still struggling, and you were blaming the controls, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But my thing is, World of Light's hard. And I feel like one thing about this adventure mode that maybe kind of missed the mark is it feels like it was built for the hardcore. Mm-hmm. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's why a right. lot of hardcore Smash players are enjoying it. Right. But it's also, where's the story mode for the not hardcore? Yeah. Like, Subspace Emissary was great for everyone. You might not enjoy everything about it, but the general premise of it was great for almost everyone. This is great for people who are, even on easy mode, Like it's great for people who are really into Smash really hardcore, really know everything perfectly. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what it's kind of for. And not that you need to do it all perfectly, but it, yeah. it's still, like, that's the feeling I get playing. I'm a casual Smash Bros. Right. fan, and I'm powering through it because um, that's I, I want to beat that mode. But I don't know why, because I'm not enjoying it that much. And I know, yes, I'm torturing myself. I can mm-hmm. lower the difficulty, but I don't want to have to lower. Like, I used to play... All my Smash matches against level 9, level 10, whatever, level 9, I think was yeah, the highest you can go, yeah. CPU, because it wasn't a challenge unless I did that. Right. And, yeah, I know for professional Smash players, none of it is a challenge. Right. But that's supposed to be the idea. Yeah. Smash Bros. appeals to everyone, and then when you don't want to be competitive, you go online. Yeah. But this is like, no, you got to be hardcore just for that, even on easy mode. It's like, man. Yeah, it. it I mean, and I, I like the concepts of it. I love the art. And Oh, yeah, yeah. The art sure, of the overworld sure. is pretty cool. For sure. And I mean, yes, I, I like the spirit. I like, I like the RPG ness. Right. I just, uh, granted, I skipped through 
quite a bit of it. Yeah, I know. You're like, oh, whatever. I'm just like, no, I'm going to have to explain it. It's okay, though. No, it's not even that. It's... I I skipped through it so I could actually start playing. And that's partially on me. But... I... Good lord. (laughs) Trying to figure out... Getting, what getting this wrecked does, by what Alan that Watt. doesn't, what this does, what that does, and it's like, oh Jesus Christ! I know they, I know, I know they explained it. I, I get that. <laughs> I, I skipped it because they needed to play it. But damn, <laughs> it's a lot of different stuff. It's a lot. It's a complicated mode, and that's the thing. There's already all these complexities: the spirits, the sub spirits, the uh, I think they RPG been, like orb. I think it would have been fantastic if they would have just stayed at spirits. The the whole sub spirits. Jesus. Christ. Come on, just just I was fine with that. What, what, what though? Here's the way I view them. View this. It's basically a set path RPG. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything wrong with that. It's actually for an RPG, pretty damn simplistic. Mm-hmm. A main spirit, some sub spirits, and a talent tree is nothing for an RPG. Yeah, I, yeah. So it doesn't bother me. I think what bothers me is that the actual fights are cheap as hell. And I get it. You can depend on your spirits, depend on this, depend on that. But like early in the game, you don't have a lot of those, and they're still. I don't even want to say cheap as hell. It's it's just like, again, it's ramped up for the hardest of the hardcore players, and I feel like like my son tried playing World of Light the other day. He's I, granted he's only five, but he does you know matches against the normal Smash against CPU, and he does okay. He wins sometimes. Uh he's got no shot. He can't mm-hmm. even get past Mario. Mm-hmm. And it's like, did you not think about everyone? Even on easy. I said it to easy. No, nah, no shot. And I, I just, I feel like it's a missed opportunity for world of light where one, I don't know if there's enough differences between the difficulties as it is. And two, I think that while an interesting concept, uh, they don't, they don't make it uh, friendly enough for a casual. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of casual Smash players, and I've been hearing this from some of them, you know, that are like me, aren't even bothering with it. They're just going to classic mode. It's the mode mm-hmm. we know. It's yeah. classic Smash. Classic, climb the ladder, beat the M boss, mm-hmm. unlock characters. We know it. It doesn't bother us. You don't have to be the greatest. You can beat it, you know, without having super hard, you know, whatever, and you just have fun. Yeah. Um, just like facing any other computer. It doesn't feel cheap. doesn't feel this. And and I, I'm glad that they – and here's the thing. If they had ramped it up for, say, like – if you fa- I don't even know if you face off against Galeem. But if you do, um, okay, I understand that being ramped up to impossible levels. I maybe understand, like, because there's, like, those yeah. four branching paths. Like, maybe when you get to the end of each path or whatever, that that particular thing is ramped up to a 1,000. Mm-hmm. Like a boss battle. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. But – Every like not all of them. Some of them are stupidly easy, but oh yeah, yeah. that just happens in Smash. Right. So some you know you get like the hundred Yoshi fight. Like it's stupidly yeah. easy, yeah. but but it feels like every you know second third battle. It's like oh, yeah, yeah I would say this, every third. Why, to fifth. why does the difficulty ramp up that high? All yeah. of, oh no, it feels like it's out of nowhere. It's like oh, yeah, why right. is it this high? Yeah, what is? And I understand the unique spirits. I understand like there's strategy involved, and I'm fine with the strategy. But it's still, it's like man. It shouldn't, and, it, and again, I'm bad at Smash, but I've actually heard this from hardcore players that, like, they struggle sometimes, yeah. but that they get stuck on some fights. It's like, oh, they it, shouldn't. They're pros, man. Yeah, and it, it's, I don't know. It was just the, the the percentage that adds on for each hit. It's like, all of a sudden, I was doing roughly the same side Smash. I would add maybe 5%, if that, freaking, they'd, one shot me and it's like what <laughs> what I, I'm doing the exact same move just with my character versus what they have yet I'm I'm only throwing like a third of the of the damage that they are <laughs> well that's part of how the is this because here's here's how here's how it works and and this is where I it might have been a bit of an oversight by them so they have the talent tree if you go through the talent tree what does it do what are the a lot of things it does makes your attacks hit harder makes your character move a little faster because like kirby doesn't move as quick as he does normally uh when you first when you start out he does his hits don't hit as hard the idea is it feels like that now but when you get later into it he's more powerful because you upgraded him Mm -hmm. so that's why you're supposed to feel weak now i this is i clicked with me the last day i was playing it you're supposed to feel weak now because 
you, you, they want you to feel like you are getting more powerful as you as you progress. I just think the steep curve needed to be brought down a bit for the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yes, still have it be well, hard. The fact that I had to fight, uh, it was like my... Because they're, they're what, basically fighter? maxed. I, I view it as, maybe, uh, when you run into those fights, they're basically maxed out talent tree and you're not. Yeah, it was, it, it, it was basically, what, my 10th fight in, maybe. And I I had, I had to replay that, what, 10, 15 times? Because I mean, it was it was just ridiculous. I mean, I might have had to fight Ridley like 50 times in a row on live stream before yeah. he killed himself. Yeah. <laughs> Dumb luck for the win. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I. So that aside, like obviously there's some complaints. Is there anything you liked about World of Light? No, I like the concept. I do. It's a it's an interesting concept. It's just a lot. It is. It it's a lot to take in at well, once. It partially his own fault, but still. Uh, and, it, still a I I my issue yeah. is my issue is just the the difficulty like. I feel like the entire game. The entire mode is the same difficulty across the board, no matter how you progress in it. Mm-hmm. What changes is you getting stronger. Mm-hmm. And I get that. I get that from a hardcore perspective, especially. I don't know. I just... Like, it, the last time we had a story mode with Subspace Emissary, you know, and this just... And, maybe uh, there should have been two story modes. I don't, I don't know. It, the one thing, too, is... I they should have cakewalk mode. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, it, maybe... And I know this is going to piss a ton of people off, but... I'm not, you know, I'm not one of, I'm not much of big on reading. I'd much rather experience it. So with, with the, so don't play Skyward Sword, right? So, <laughs> so with you would think it's broken with the, uh, the whole like, um, spirits and sub spirits and stuff like that to actually go and have like a fight where all of a sudden, okay, you hit without a spirit. Okay, now let's see what adding a spirit does. Okay, this. Now, to be fair, you might not have noticed this. On when you go into the match, uh, you have your spirit thing down there, and you have whatever you, whatever you have equipped. It'll tell you if you have an advantage. It'll have arrows pointing up, mm-hmm. saying you have an advantage with that spirit on whatever you have equipped, or if you have a disadvantage, and you should probably swap your spirit up. Yeah, like your spirit no, I actually saw that. doesn't work. I and saw then that. if it does nothing, then it's just whatever. It's neutral. Right. Right. Um, so like that's kind of its quick. Hey. You know, you but, might not know what's happening with your spirits, but you know whatever you have equipped has an advantage or a disadvantage. Right, right, right. But but to show it that you know, okay, this actually does give you an advantage here for this. I mean, yes, it does say that it does, but you have to read. Right, I can't just pick up a concept through actually playing. Well, you can. The problem is part of playing is reading. Even yeah. if you skip the tutorial, it's all the information's in front of you. You just have to read. Yeah. You don't want to read. That's no. the problem. You just want to smash. Want to play, and no, and, and no read. Which means yeah. this mode is not for you. This mode requires a ton of reading. Yeah, or a ton of trial and error and realizing that this isn't working, and then getting frustrated. Yeah, <laughs> that's why. Like, I honestly think if you went straight to classic mode, you would have nothing but praise right now. Yeah, you probably would have got through. You know, five. You probably have more characters unlocked than I do right yeah. now. Since I'm unlocking them through that mode, which is like the slowest method to unlock them instead of mm-hmm. going to the classic mode. Uh, so, like, uh, and I feel like you would have loved that mode because yeah. it would have ended with the bosses specific to each character, and you would have been like, whoa, this is awesome. Yeah. And now it's like, we're like, uh, I, I just don't think it's the mode for, like, I think you like the ideas. Yeah. But it's not, like, everything I'm hearing from you is, like, my thing is just difficulty. Your thing is just, I don't want to read. Yeah. And it requires reading because it's an RPG. Yeah, there is that. And you like some RPGs, the ones that you don't have to read to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Which is very few of them. Yeah. Maybe, maybe simplistic ones. Octopath Traveler, you don't really got to read to figure it out. You can figure it out through trial and error pretty quickly. But the thing is, is like, but why play an RPG if you don't have to read? There's a lot of text in RPGs. Yeah, I, 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 I can't give you full-on answers. <laughs> I, so here's, here's the thing. My brain only processes certain things sometimes. And um... Now, you played in handheld mode. Yes. I have not played in handheld mode yet. What, what was that like? Because you got to play it on TV83. Yeah. With, with like, what did you use, a like GameCube controller or a Pro controller? No, I think it was a Pro controller. Well, okay. Fairly well, sure. Well, I think you, I, well, we got a choice controller. on the competitive side. I don't I'm know pretty sure it was a casual. Pro controller. Oh, was that on the casual? Okay. Yeah. Um, God. I. Granted, I'm playing Kirby and I normally don't play Kirby, but yeah, yeah, I don't know either. if that had part of it to do with it, but um, I don't know. I just. 
I was trying to do something and it felt like it just was doing the complete opposite. I was standing on top of a freaking health item on in the one fight that I was having really troubles on. And instead of actually picking up the damn health item, he decided he wanted to start punching. And I was like, hello? Which button did you hit? A. Hit B. You pick up the health item with B. What, to suck it up? No. You just tap B quick. And I'll eat it. That's the easiest way to do it. Because if, if you do A, the thing is they don't have... You can pick it up with either. But A... I, I have found at least, and I'm and I I didn't play. You know, you play with the Joy Cons. I haven't played with those yet. I was playing with a, a Power A controller. Um, I noticed that when I walk over something like a, a food item, I hit A. He tends not to eat it. Sometimes he'll just do it. And I don't know if it's happening automatically, but when I hit B every time when I'm standing over, he always eats it. Because I think what the idea is, um, you don't it's, want you don't want both buttons doing it because if someone's next to you, I mean, you don't want to not be able to attack. But if A is to pick up items, I'm trying to pick up the damn item. You're not. You're why not, are we? Not. Why are we switching buttons to pick up items? I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. That. So I mean, it was just like. So it kept you kept you with your primary attack button. Yeah. Because you can still do like, side B's hello? and up B's and down B's. Yeah. You know. You yeah, that's that's fine. But if I'm standing over an item and I want to, I hit the button to pick up the item. Give maybe me the item. Maybe the game hates you. I don't know. It, it seemed to in that fight. My biggest issue is like when I was playing online with with Pikachu. Uh, you get, you get into these matches that have items and the food items drop. And the problem is like a lot of times Pikachu, it seems to Pikachu drop right on top like, of them too. Pikachu like only sprints. Yeah, he doesn't really Runs walk. Past it. Oops. So like <laughs> you're zipping back. Like I'm trying to stop on the item. And I can't. It feels like it's. I'm set. God, I just want an inch. <laughs> Yeah, can't or, do it. or it just seems like, oh, hey, look, the items spawn. Oh, look, and it spawned right on top of them for some ungodly reason. Uh, it happens. No, I, it, it always happens. I, I, I understand it's it's random, but it sometimes feels like it's. It might not be not. random in World of Light. World yeah. of Light isn't a different yeah. thing. It's a story mode. Yeah, it doesn't have to be random in World yeah. of Light. Um. So, so like, and you're like, really, really? It's, come on, game. So lots of negatives. Yeah. <laughs> we hate some of the results of it. Yeah. No. No. Um, no. I mean. I mean, uh, I still only it's see. It's not like I didn't have fun. No, it's the only thing you can you could speak. To, well, and I was chiding him the whole time. Want me to beat that for you? Yeah. Like I was playing in hard mode, so I'm like normal. Like, give me that. I'll play. Yeah, right. Watch yeah, me beat this yeah. one try. Yeah. Like I'm so used to getting wrecked in hard mode. Like I'm watching him. I'm like, God, he's really not avoiding attacks. He's not using his shield. Granted, I had to learn all that the hard way because I don't usually avoid attacks. Or I just go in there, button mashed to victory. Uh, <laughs> Can't do that in this mode, so I already learned the hard way by dying fifty plus times to Ridley. That oh, you got a shield, you got to grab, you got to do this, got to do that. You got to really be good at avoiding, even with Kirby trying to put distance. Sometimes some characters oh, I, you need to get right on the top other one, of. The other one, the other ones that I, the other one that I noticed too, I did a couple of side smashes. Looked like my hammer went right straight through the character. And it's like right stick. What? Right stick. I know both of us are actually really bad about using the stick. The, the right stick actually. I, I, thing is, I need to actually hit the thing and go look at the controls. The right stick lets you do a lot of the things that we're making way more difficult than we need to. Like, say you want to do a side B, you can do that with just a flick of the right stick. And I'm just like, that's way easier than trying to like coordinate two like a stick and a button at the same time. I'm like, but I, and that's but, been there, that's been there since GameCube. But I just I, never. But the, used but the thing it. is that I swung and it went literally right through the character. Lag. I sat there and watched it. Lag. Went, Online lag. I'm like, and, and yeah, online, online lag mode. on yeah, no, an offline. Mode. Yeah, I s- literally sat there, yeah, and watched it go right know. through them. Um, the one grab range was like, what? I'm like 15 feet from you, and you don't have a a, a like a sling, uh, hook shot like Link does. How am I like that little grab? Ee- yeah, but I was way past that range, and I was like, what the? How am I Maybe caught? Right on the edge? Sure. Maybe he has a spirit that gives him extended reach. Yeah. Maybe he's got the talent for extended reach. Yeah. I, I mean, here's the it's, thing. It just sounds like to me World of Light Mode is not for you. I'm not saying that you don't enjoy it. I'm not saying that if you, if and when you buy the game, you won't beat that mode on easy. Yes, yeah, so I'll beat the mode, but uh, probably on easy. Because uh, especially here's the thing. You say, eh, but here's the thing. It's yeah. a really long mode. Yeah. Like really good. There's that. So the thing is, like, if you ever, and this is what I, this is just, I'm not saying that you know you do it this way, but if you care just about beating it, just do it on easy and beat it over with, because otherwise you're gonna be doing it forever. You're never gonna play anything else. There's that. 
Um, that, and that's the way I am with a lot of games, too. I'll play it easy just because I want to beat it. Mm-hmm. I'll go back and play it harder if I want to, but if there's multiple modes, multiple things, I'm just trying to get to everything. Yeah. Uh, so I've played... I haven't even done a normal smash against the computer yet. Hasn't even crossed my mind to do it. <laughs> um, I have done some online matches. I did one arena match playing against Ryan, one of our Patreon backers. Uh, and then, uh, who, by the way, he was in Brazil or something. I don't know. He's, he's, he's far away. Uh, and we had no leg issues, which was great between us. Uh, granted he has pretty decent internet. So do I, uh, so that's, yeah. I didn't expect it to be problems, but it's also one of those. You don't know how much the distance is going to matter. Didn't really matter. Uh, there was, um, I've done online matches in general, uh, and slight criticism of the fact that no matter what you pick, you can't, if you do a quick match, especially, you can't guarantee that you're going to get the match you want. Like, if you want to do one-on-one, no items, you know, Final Destination-style stages, um, it's kind of a crapshoot if it's going to happen, uh, especially until you get up to the higher ranks where more people seem to be choosing that. Uh, but you can still get up to the higher ranks with items as well, so you'll still have people choosing to use items, stuff, which doesn't bother me. I actually want to use items but because uh, I suck. <laughs> so kudos to me. I want the hammer. Um, right? It, it's just... Uh, I don't like that. I think it was better when it was split up with four glory mode on its own thing. And I think you could just have ranks for both and call it good. But Yeah. Uh, whatever. They didn't do it that way. It doesn't really bother me as a casual as much as it probably bothers some of the more hardcore players. Uh, classic mode, great. No complaints about classic mode. I've only gone through it one time. I did it with Link. Uh, great, great final battle. Lots of fun. Um Got a little frustrated because I had a, kind of a cakewalk all the way to the final boss, and then the final boss, it's a boss. Was it's harder it's than a the boss legit, in the actual game. It's a legit. <laughs> yeah, it was harder than the boss in the actual Breath of the Wild game. Um, but it was uh, it was fun. Uh, and, it, I mean, yeah, it was kind of like, really? I, I, like, my frustrations with it weren't like, oh, man, this is, you know, like in World of Light where it feels like the game is almost cheating to win. This was a can't believe i'm dying to this yeah i'm so stupid yeah like i this is how bad i am as Smash Bros. guy i know what to do and i just my brain and my fingers are not communicating correctly um so i had a lot of fun with that uh, i don't again i don't have a lot of characters unlocked and i don't want to i don't want to make this like our big smash cast because obviously we talked about you know the game awards for a while yeah uh and i want to make sure we get some other voices and darren i know wants to come back for it uh, maybe give, give get some of the YouTubers on you might uh, have that are sp- from the competitive You side. might have to have Smashcast Part 2 and I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. We'll see. Uh, the point is that I just wanted to briefly touch upon it because it did come out. Mm-hmm. Um, both of us, I played more than he has, but I haven't played much more than what I just described. And uh, I honestly, it I, and I said this on live stream and I'll say it again now, it is the most fun I have had with the Smash Bros. game since the N64. <laughs> there you go. Um, World of Light. I wouldn't really count in that opinion for now. But I know if I beat it on hard, I'm going to be pretty happy when I'm done. Yeah. One, because I'm never going back. Yeah. <laughs> After this, not going back to it. Uh, I'm gone. I'm gone. Uh, but two, uh, I, I mean, I, I like World of Light. I, 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 it makes me want to be a hardcore Smash player, but I just don't really care. I don't care about learning how to wave dash, how to side dash, how to, how to, recover properly with the different characters even i suck at recovery um well, that's the one nice thing about kirby is you just poof 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 and you, you, you generally no, good i i suck at recovering with kirby oh, yeah it's oh. supposed to be able to this easy recovery it's too slow unless you start at a high point it's harder to come back up from down below than it is from up top and i'm <laughs> just give me link in his spin attack with a hook shot and i'm good um there you go. anyways uh, let's see here. Or Pikachu, which I still have never once in all my years playing him figured out how to do the double zip on, on his up B. Still don't know how it works. <laughs> still don't know how it works. <laughs> sometimes I get it to work, sometimes it doesn't. Pure know, luck. And I don't know what direction it's going to go. Pure after. luck. Like, it goes the right direction the first time, but I have no idea where it's going the second time. Yeah. Maybe it's going to zip back out and I'm going to die. Or it'll zip back in. I... <laughs> Honestly, stage is over here. Yep. This is what happens when you're a casual. You don't look up the controls. You don't yeah. really figure anything out. I only recently figured out how to do like the little smash, and I had to tell you how to do it because I'm like, I didn't know how to do it. Just hold B. Apparently, I didn't. I didn't yeah. know. I've never. Here's the thing. I I honestly, if I just looked up the controls and memorized them, 
Yeah. I'd be way the hell better at this game. But this is why I don't play fighting games. Yeah. This is why I'm not a fighting game fan. Yeah. There's too many intricacies to the controls. If I press it this way, this way, this way, hitting this button or doing this button combo. This is, and, like, and I know yeah. Smash is simpler than a lot of other games with like, well, you know, you have to hit like 10 buttons for the combo. <laughs> yeah. I just up, down, left, right, yeah. side, diagonal, B. What? Mm-hmm. Up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, start, select, B, A. Yeah. Or whatever, whatever the Konami code is. I totally just butchered it. I Yes, I think you did. Yeah, I, I'm just... That's my thing. That's why I'm not into fighting games. But I don't know. Like, Smash is kind of different. It's simpler, but not. And I even suck at that. So that's what you know what I do at other fighting games. I do win sometimes. I'm the ultimate Bushin Master. You should see me. The last time I was playing Mortal Kombat, I was playing Mortal Kombat 10 against uh, one of my friend's uh, ex-husbands. And I was going, and like he like plays it all the time, and I'm just sitting here like going like this with my fist on the buttons, my <laughs> fist on the buttons, and I'm just randomly hitting shoulder buttons with my other fingers, and I beat him. Yes. And he got so mad. I'm like, I, well, that, that's I'm like, literally that's button. the this other is thing. the definition of button. Mash. That's the other thing about fighting games too. It's like <laughs> you can literally button mash and win. In, in most of the cases, time you won't. Yeah. Most of the time you won't. Right. Because the reason it works is because it's not predictable. You don't know what. Bu- yeah. You don't know what's about to happen. Yeah, right. The guy doing the controller doesn't know what's going to happen. Yeah, right. Who you're facing. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, next up, we uh, have one uh, one other topic I want to talk about quick, um, and we'll, we'll kind of end the podcast up on that. Uh, so Reggie Fizeme uh, has been doing a ton of interviews lately for some reason. I don't know why, but he is. And one of the interviews he uh, was talked about, you know, gaps in third-party games, Red Dead Redemption 2, why isn't that on Switch, other things like that. Here's what he had to say. He said, the way the industry works, games are in development for multiple years. People forget that Switch is only experiencing its second holiday. So many, many games that are just launching were well in development before any conversations were had with these developers regarding Nintendo Switch. Now that we've been in the marketplace coming up on two years, now that we've shown the pace with which we're growing an install base and doing it globally, that's the other piece that is meaningful for developers. Our strength in the Americas, our strength in Asia, our strength in Europe is officially important, or it's critically important. That's what creates the opportunity for developers to make sure their content is available on Switch at the earliest opportunity. Um, I think what he's trying to say, because this was more in response to some question about Red Dead, is we're going to get a lot of games next year. Yeah. He was basically explaining, like, we don't get games now because Switch didn't really wasn't really a thing back when these games started development. Mm-hmm. Uh, and on top of that, um, when you've been in the marketplace long enough and you show them what, well, what, what kind of system you are, the pace Nintendo games are going to come out, mm-hmm. third parties can figure out where their games fit in that. And I kind of right. I get it. Right, right. It, it's, it's, it's saying that, you know, let's say three years is the, is the I mean, average lifespan of, of development for a game. We're in holiday two, Switch means next year holiday. These people, will, the the ones, the games that are coming out next year holiday, will have had, will have ample had time. basically just they would have started when the Switch came out, or at least when they had dev kits right before right, the Switch came right, out. Right, right, right. I think, I think it's an obviously Nintendo's going to spin it, but I think it's an optimistic view. Of course, it's a hey, look, we can't get these games now, but you know, Hopefully. realistically, we should be getting them you know next time yeah. around because. Well, we'll bet on the market long enough. They know, and they'll really be thinking of us the whole time. Yeah. And I, I understand that mentality. I also think it, uh, that Reggie fils will never say something like, we don't think our platform can run these games. Right. Oh, no, definitely not. He's not going to say that. No. Uh, and could Red Dead 2 run on Switch? I mean, you would obviously lean towards no, but, it, but anything, state, anything sure. could be... Come on, did you see Ark Survival Evolved? I, anything can be cut back enough to run on Switch. I was going to say. Whether or not you want it running on Switch... Like that, uh, Ark Survival Evolved should not be on Switch. Don't buy it. Please, please don't buy that N64. Not even. It's an insult to even call it N64 looking on Switch. Oh, boy. It doesn't even run well on the Xbox One X, but at least you could like stop still, and it looks pretty. Oh, boy. You can't even do Wait, that on what? this game. It is... I, I mean, there's probably SNES games better looking than this. Holy cow. The resolution... Uh, someone uh, counted it. It goes down to 360p. Yes, 360p. That's fine. That happens in in other games, but the textures turn to the water. Like at one point on the screen, in a still image, digital foundry pixel counted down to like 320p, which is the lowest resolution we've ever seen on a Switch. 
and like oh. the shadows will literally like like here like here here's the soda there's a shadow coming this way shadow doesn't exist doesn't exist boom the whole shadows there exist now <laughs> the tree here, here here's a tree here's tree too doesn't exist doesn't exist doesn't exist hey there's the second tree just oh. pops up right in front of you nice didn't even know it was there. So, the so you mean kind of like the the Pokemon random encounters when they're not supposed to be really random encounters, but all of a sudden you're walking along and all of a sudden, holy, it, it, there's a Pokemon. It, some <laughs> things just shouldn't be put on Switch. Right. Arc Survival Evolved doesn't run well on Xbox One X. It wasn't going to run well on Switch. Mm-hmm. And it definitely wasn't going to look good. I mean, I, you know what? I would have wished they would have released Arc Survival Evolved with how it with how it looks on Xbox and PlayStation 4 and just let the frame rate tank to 1. <laughs> at, least, at least, at least, you can stop and take a pretty screen- screenshot. So you can like fake that this game looks good on Switch. Yeah, right. It looks good. You're not gonna you fake that you made it not, kind hey, of hey, playable, hey, but hey, garbage. You're not faking anything. It looks fantastic. <laughs> it's just not playable. It's the worst port to Switch yet. Period. Yeah. Bar none. Yeah. And I don't think Panic Button could have even save this one. Because they would have had to reprogram the entire game, I'm sure. Yeah, and they would have had it to doesn't really run redo anything. almost every Even asset. a lot of PCs yeah. struggle with it. And it's just yeah. like, this is just not, was not a well-put-together game code-wise, optimization-wise especially. Uh, yeah, I'm all for pushing things to the max, but yeah. like, you got to do it. If you're going to if you're gonna push everything to the max, you have to and have And they're not doing code. that on Switch. You have to do the optimal I'm sorry, code. guys. The Wii U Breath of the Wild game looks way the hell prettier and has none of these issues. So, hop. There's Unreal Engine 4 games on Switch. I, was like, I, I don't I don't know what this game is doing. I can't figure it out. But the, the team behind it, I'm not saying they shouldn't be able to make another game. I'm saying they need a different quality team to like optimize it or something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, maybe they should hire Panic Button. Maybe that's for all this all systems are on. I, here, make the preliminary <laughs> have Panic Button. They should, have, they should have hit the Panic Button. They should have hit the Panic Button on that. Eject. Eject. So, again, Reggie, I think, is, is saying some cool stuff here. Yeah. Um, I don't expect him to say anything else. I, he's right. trying to make it sound like we should expect more next year and the year after. Right. Uh, I just hope that's true. Right. Because PlayStation 5 and Xbox 2 or whatever are right around the corner. Yeah. So I'm hoping. Yeah. Now, what helps is if you pay attention to uh, Xbox One or PlayStation 4 uh, is they had a lot of ports in the first two years, especially PlayStation 4, tons of PlayStation 3 ports. So... Like, getting all the Wii U ports, like, okay, why weren't people chastising Sony for it? They were doing the exact same thing yeah. in their first two years. Yeah. Except Nintendo's had even more exclusives come out than, than Sony yeah. did. Not More than that, more than anyone. They've had, they've had, I counted it up, they've had at least 16 exclusive Nintendo Switch games release from launch through today. That's not including their own IP, right? No, that is. Okay. Yeah. They've had 16 console exclusive games release. In 18 months. That's way more than Xbox and Sony ever did in the mm-hmm. first two years. And yeah, they've had Wii U ports. The Wii U ports, are there's not as many of them as there were these console exclusives. So mm-hmm. they balanced it pretty well. Unfortunately, they didn't balance all it. Like Xenoblade Chronicles 2, I think, should have been pushed the spring of this year. I think Let's Go Beach, Let's Go Eevee should have been pushed and came out. Well, it should have been come out sooner and came out during the summer. And I think that would have gave you like a kind of a major game in each major quadrant of the year. But that's just me. Uh, they didn't do it that way, and that's that's whatever. It's working out for them, I guess. At the end yeah. of the day, so yeah. hard to really. I mean, complaining as a consumer, I still have well, the content. Like I, I mean, always want the content sooner than later. So I guess. I mean, the fact that they the last basically the last two major games that they've put out are the fastest selling in their history. Yeah, and we, it's well, not in the his, it's not the fastest selling in the history of Pokemon, but it was at the time the fastest selling Switch game, uh, which got completely wrecked. By Smash. Yeah. Just destroyed. But it's okay. Uh, so Reggie is saying basically expect more soon or next year. And I'm just like, well, what else is he going to say? Yeah. And I'm always expecting more. So I'm not. I, I, my, I uh, no I'm longer ex- expect. I'm expecting more. I'm just not getting my hopes up for more. I expect zero AAA <laughs> third party ports that are not already announced to Switch next year. So right now, NBA 2K20, don't expect it. And we've had 2K18, 2K19, should expect it. Nah. <laughs> nah. 
I'm looking at these sale charts. I don't see NBA 2K19 getting sales boosts. I see all Nintendo games getting sales boosts. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just like, I'm, I'm trying to, I don't know. I hate being this way because I was optimistic heading into this year, and now I come to the end of this year, and I'm like, yeah, I think next year is going to be killer for Switch. There are so many amazing exclusive games coming to Switch next year. It's going to feel like 2017 all over again. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean we're going to get a ton of AAA third-party support. Yeah, Doom Eternal, awesome. Next Wolfenstein, sure, great. But we got Doom and Wolfenstein already. And getting the next ones is great, but like, what else? Oh, another NBA maybe? Okay, what? Yeah, sure, we're getting all the old Final Fantasy games. What about the new one? Oh, you get the Pocket Edition. Okay, what about like the new? New, new one. Not, not the Pocket Edition, like the real Final Fantasy 15 or, um, hello, the next Final Fantasy game. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I, I think we're going to get a lot yeah. of Japanese support for sure because Switch is about to pass PlayStation 4. Uh, just past Vita, it's about the last PlayStation 4 and install base. So I think it's going to start getting all the Japan support. But I mean, Western developers, man. Bethesda's kind of doing a little something-something. Can we get a little something-something for everybody else? And I don't just mean Crash Team Racing, <laughs> which, by the way, it has had its logos and stuff removed from certain elements on the website and the trailers now. So now it's leaving the speculation that Crash Team Racing is not going to be day and date, even though it's not coming up until June next year. For Switch, so that sucks. They have had plenty of time to get that right. It's not even done. It's not even done being developed yet, and they already know it's probably not going to hit launch. What? And this has Come happened on. with other games before too. Again, it could end up being nothing, but that's just something that I haven't talked about yet. That I'm like, well, what, what am I supposed to say? It's very obvious to me. It's just not going to be day and date. It'll still come to Switch, but it'll be like winter instead of summer. Anyways, Good I think it's going to do it for the podcast yeah. this yeah. week. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Ninty Prime. You can follow Eric on Twitter at Emo8790. You can get this amazing shirt or that amazing shirt or variants of the shirt, different colors. Uh, we'll have some links down in the description uh, to buy, purchase these from, uh, where do we put them up at? Tee Public. Sorry, I work with so many different t shirt companies. Otherwise, I think about it. otherwise, just come to the website and. Yeah, the website will have the links because Eric's, Eric's a lot better about the links than I am. I am. But uh, NintendoPrime.net. Uh, he'll put out the podcast there usually the same day I get it up everywhere else mm-hmm. um, or the day after it's, and besides it's, that uh, you know you can check us out on, on iTunes on Podbean on Google Play we're on all those places if you just look up Nintendo Prime Podcast three words it'll it'll pop right up it's the only one on there that has that title uh, also uh, check it out the website as well but beyond that you should really check it out patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime why? Because for five dollars a month, you get early access to the audio version. You usually a full day early access. Uh, for ten dollars a month, you get to watch this live stream live for Edward Norton or anyone else. <laughs> right Edward Norton seems to be the one that always watches it live. Yeah, but yeah. Um, for anyone else that happens to tune in live, that for ten dollars and up or more, you actually get to see the podcast way early yeah. because we record usually on Thursday nights. Don't release publicly till Monday. Think about that. That's what, yeah. four day, three day early access. That's, Something like that. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy, and you get to see it as it's going on. Um, and and you, generally, we get to say, or generally, we say, uh, you know, with this nice little green screen in the back. But uh, yeah, this. Oh this yeah, event. I actually want to talk about that before we head out. I'm going to be talking about it on Prime Answers as well, so most of the public will hear about this before this podcast goes up, which is fine. Different audiences, uh, and this is happening at the end, whereas that'll happen at the beginning. Uh, oh, I guess the last. What's the last Patreon tier? Oh, $20. You have the opportunity to be on a podcast. Yep, on one podcast per month. All right, so, setting all that aside. Although this month, I don't know if I put out the Patreon post for it. I probably should. Like, maybe I can grab someone for next week. I'm just trying to think because it's, it's just so hard with the holidays mm-hmm. for me right now. I kind of didn't put up a post because I was trying to keep this, um, the December kind of, I don't know. I'll figure out something. Uh, at least something to make up. To yeah. the people that 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 ha- should have had the opportunity. Yes. Uh, so let me let, let me start by saying what's happening. Why is our podcast with all my gaming stuff in the background? Um, I am the, the well. The real reason it, it's this week is because uh, I'm gone the weekend that I normally edit this. So I'm trying to make editing as easy as possible so I can have it done on Friday and ready to go. Uh, it won't be uploaded yet, but at least when I get back on Sunday, I can hit upload and be ready to go Monday morning. Uh, that's the plan anyways. Whether or not that happens, I don't know yet because it hasn't come yet. Uh, but uh, in not using the green screen like we usually do will make it a lot easier on me because basically I'm just editing 
getting out the different blips in the camera, which hopefully will be fixed with the new capture card next week. Uh, so that's basically all I'd have to do for editing besides adding in a few little graphics here and there. So it'll be really easy editing, which is what I want it to be. Uh, but another reason is because I am in the midst of potentially overhauling the presentation of the podcast. Um, some of you guys probably really like this background. It's all gamery. Of course, that, that looks cool. Uh, lots of Zelda stuff. But uh, you guys know I also use this background uh, for some of my discussion videos and stuff. And I definitely I use it for prime answers. And I think um, I like this set. It's awesome. But I want another set like this. And I think what I want to do is take our, our green screen room, repaint about half of it, um, get another table so I don't have to keep transferring tables back and forth. That's kind of a big thing for me yeah. right now. Uh, and then decorate that a little differently. Put up a couple monitors or TVs that we can display different logos, Nintendo Prime podcast logo or whatever. Maybe we have a different show, maybe a live stream show. Maybe I do a Q&A and, ha- and I want to do it in there, you know, make that work. Maybe what I probably should do is make this wall the new set, paint one of those walls back to white in there and make that where I do Prime News. But whatever. I, it's something I got to figure out. And I was just thinking that because if I do something with this wall, um, I can make a live. I can do live streams in here where my main computer is, which would be sweet. Anyways, anyway, the point is I'm trying to make it so we have a practical background. Yeah. Instead of using the green screen, the green screen is great. Swapping backgrounds, doing a lot, you can do a lot of cool stuff. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm editing the podcast now. I don't have the luxury of Martin, who got really good with the green screening. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for me, I'm trying to make it more simple for me because I don't want to have to cut content on my channel for it. I don't want, and I want to keep the content of the podcast high. And I think this background is a high quality, Yeah. but I don't want it to be the same background in a whole bunch of different videos. I want to have different sets. So I already have the prime news set. I've got this set. I want to, the green screen was another set, but since I don't really want to green screen a lot, I'll probably keep one wall in there green for the rare time I want to use a green screen. Uh, I I want to set up another set that's like this but different with the monitors with certain gaming stuff but maybe different. Um, maybe like there's a shelf of Nintendo controllers, right? And then maybe a shelf of Xbox controllers or something. Um, change it up a bit. Whoa! How dare you? With Xbox, how dare you? I have a second channel, guys. And yeah, I know. I, know. I don't really upload to it very often, <laughs> but I want to in, in next I know. year. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. Like just something like that, or maybe it'll just be all straight amiibo. Uh, maybe I'll have zero Zelda references in there since there's so much Zelda in this setup. Um, I can't imagine why. I have no idea why there's so much Zelda, and it's not just because I love it so much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just something. I want to have I'll have a little bit of a different kind of setup in there. Heck, maybe it'll just be the monitors and some fake IKEA plants, and I don't know. I don't know. I, it's something I got to brainstorm with Eric. I got also got to look at like what I'm willing to budget for it. Um, how yep. much how much a table is going to cost or a new desk uh, that I'm either going to put out here or I'll leave this one here and do it in there. Probably leave this one here because it's small. Maybe get a little bigger one for in there. I don't know. Um, although the bigger one would be easier to move move in here than in there. But uh, yeah, that door comes off. But yeah, the door does come off, and there's like <laughs> that wall comes down, and it's literally like an empty room. There's like nothing <laughs> yeah, else no, in I there. So <laughs> that wall comes down. That wall comes <laughs> no, down. it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> I mean, the door comes down if yeah. you want to take that yeah, out. Yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, so there's just some stuff I'm looking into, uh, changing things up. And you can kind of like say this, hey, experiment one. So if we're back here again uh, next week or the week after or the week after, uh, it's probably just because I'm still working, working out on something. what we're doing. Heck, maybe one time we'll just do it with a straight green screen without green screening it, and then we'll just have some stuff hung in the background. Maybe we'll hang up some Nintendo Prime shirts or something. I don't know. Um, we'll figure it out. It, it, it's a work in progress. It's a brainstormy thing, and also it's the holidays. So that's why I think this background, get used to it for now. But in 2019, um, that's where I'm really looking to kind of flip the script a little bit. Hopefully before we hit episode 100. That would be sweet to debut the new one for episode 100. Yeah. yeah. That would be sick. That's a nice goal. So we got about like, 10 weeks? Yeah. Roughly? Like, yeah, about 10 weeks. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next week. Peace.